Hello once again and welcome to the Poker Stars Arena hosting the Sunday Million. Yes, we had Scoop, we had the Scoop After Party, we then had the Bounty Builder Turbo Series. After all that, the standard $109 buy-in two-day Sunday Million is back. And with 9,104 entries this week, a little bit of added value for the players. Prize pool guaranteed at $1 million, more than $108,000 up top and 64 players returning for day two. I am James Hartigan, alongside me this evening, Joe Stapleton and Mr. Griffin Benger. Hey, everyone. Uh, Griffin, is this Gr is a new experience. Is Griffin the added you. value you were talking about? Uh, <laughs> Griffin is always added value. Griffin, you have become such an important part of our online live streaming coverage, but I believe this is the first time we've had you on a Monday night for a Sunday Million Day 2. Yeah, you know, for months I've been hearing about these Sunday millions, never got the call, just been sitting on the bench waiting, and finally the phone rang and here I am. Uh, and Joe, did I read it correctly? Did you drive through the night in order to be able to do this stream? Technically, I drove through the night. I mean, I got home at like 1230. Yeah, in that the morning. seems perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, let's get straight to the action and take you to our first feature table. Action is already underway. And we are focusing on this table because it has the current chip leader, Al Hakim QQ from Sweden, is the biggest stack coming into day two of this two day event with more than 4 million. But the action here starts with Hardy opening with ace three of diamonds and just the flat from Tyrone with big slick. Al Hakim looks familiar. Is, is that someone who plays in the EPT? Is that like uh, a reg? I don't know. Al Hakim playing from Sweden. Best online result was back in 2018. A third place finish in the hot 22 for just shy of 3K. Typically a lower stakes player as far as their online resume is concerned, Joe. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not someone from the EPT circuit. I've seen that face somewhere before. Yeah, you know, as far as three big blinds is concerned, uh, you know, starting the day for Hardy Z. You like looking down at a suited wheel ace uh, under the gun one, but likely you are going to run into a better hand and you just got to hope to get there. And that's a pretty decent start with three diamonds and a wheel draw on the flop. Oh, baby. And the chop outs. Ooh. No song today. Gets it in with a monster draw, but does not get there on the river. So we have an elimination and we say goodbye to Tyrone. Sorry, we say goodbye to Hardy. Tyrone won the pot. It's Hardy Z1, who's out in 63rd place. So two eliminations so far. 63rd, 64th gone. Current payout, $1,684. And that will be the payout until we get down to 44. And as we referenced at the start of the show, up top more than 100K. We will follow this through to the final table and down to a winner. This is the final day of a two-day event. Pretty nothing hand there to follow that elimination, but it is uh, worth noting that Al, Al Hakim QQ did fold uh, the Queen 10 offsuit with all those chips in late position. So maybe a bit of an indication that Al Hakim won't necessarily be flexing that big chip muscle uh, as much as maybe we'd normally see uh, in some of these more high stakes tournaments. Uh, definitely a, a hand you'd expect to see an open from that kind of stack in late position. Yeah, I think that's something worth referencing, Joe, is coming back with 64 players today, uh, looking down the players in the lobby, there weren't that many names that screamed out, oh, we've seen them before. Oh, I recognize that player. Um, we have got Thomas Nels, Tom Nels won in the field, playing from Brazil, who won a Sunday Million back in 2019 for 110K. But other than that, a bunch of, I'm not saying these are unaccomplished players, but they're not necessarily on our radar. Where the, where the frick is Dinge Brinker when you need him? <laughs> Pretty fair fight here going to the flop. A rare three-handed uh, flop. I'm not going to see a ton of those, um, you know, three-plus-handed uh, hands um, when there's not a lot of chips in play. But in this situation, the early position open with the ace jack, we are going to see it continue. Probably going to get Tyrone out of there. The question is, does paid want to continue with that short stack and does not with the best hand hey 
Eight now here with 16 big blinds. Should play as a shove with the king nine, but just gives a walk to the chip leader, holding that jack do suited. The laddering is real, depending on what your situation is in these events. Sixty one remaining. Next pay jump isn't for a while, but hey, it's you know I can't do math. What's what's twenty three hundred minus sixteen hundred? That would be seven hundred. It's like seven hundred dollars difference. Yeah, and you know, we shouldn't make too many judgments about these kind of players, as James already remarked, but already we're seeing right there Al Hakim just a min raise from the small blind with the five four offsuit and a fold from uh Mirka, I believe with the ace four off to just that min race blind on blind. So um, definitely some, you know, skittish play here. A lot of people not really wanting to, to get too involved. Who in their right mind would choose Todd Solons as a screen name? <laughs> we just got a massive welcome to the dollhouse fan here. Just living in Holland, playing online poker. I mean, one thing I would say, Joe, is you highlighted the fact that uh, the next money jump isn't for a while, but we see how quickly they plow through the field during the first few levels on a day two of the Sunday Million. In yeah. no time at all, we'll be saying, oh, we're down to 44 and they've reached that money jump. So I don't blame these guys for being a little bit cautious and, and playing for the ladder. For sure. And, you know, without blowing too much of where I just spent the lo the last week, I want to talk about most of it on the podcast. I spent the better part of the day yesterday folding a lot of spots that I would have probably taken if it weren't for, like, pretty significant money jumps that meant a lot to me uh, in that situation. Stuff like King-9, right? Stuff yeah. like King-9 when it's folded to you and you don't really want to get called by Queen Jack um, and be out and miss out on a couple hundred more dollars. So I totally get it. I will say Tyrone right now is standing out as, as someone who's willing to get active at this stage. Has that 50 big blind stack. We saw, um, you know, the flat with queen 10 suited. We saw a pretty loose open with eight, seven suited, um, which I think is fine, especially with how uh, tight everyone else is playing. But good to see that uh, they're comfortable enough um, opening something like that. Because uh, those are usually the kind of players uh, that find themselves, you know, final tabling and even winning the Sunday millions, the one that the ones that are capable of really bulldozing and not, um, you know, falling all your hope on lady luck. I was going to say that we've seen this player before, but then I've realized that this white tiger avatar is very common. You mean that dark spade that Tyrone has? <laughs> well, you mean the I can't be bothered to select a generic avatar? Avatar? Yes. No, I meant the white tiger. Well, we've got an all in here. Jack nine versus six is nine on the flop. And that will be the elimination of Tom Nels, who we referenced is a former Sunday Million champion and is now out. Yeah, and facing a nine big blind shove with Jack nine suited, Merka tw 2007 willing to call it off there for, you know, almost half their stack at that stage. But, um, you know, maybe that was the plan. Two and a half exit, be willing to call off that nine big blind short stack. Certainly worked out and was, uh, you know, kind of against the exact hand you want to be, pocket sixes uh, for the stone flip. So Merka getting some momentum here. Bit of a loose peel here from Tyrone. Uh, Ace five suited to a two and a half X. Um, but again, willing to splash around, see some flops with that 50 big blind stack. Oh, by goodness. And Machine kind of with a solid read on the situation. Sees Merka's a little active, sees Ty Tyrone's a little active. Maybe not all that perceptive of Merka was willing to call it off uh, with nine high before. But hey, does get a fold from Ace 10. Tyrone, with the advantage of position, makes the call, wow. and it is Ooh. a set of threes 
on the flop versus the straight draw and backdoor flush draw for Tyrone. Yeah, Tyrone getting caught speeding a bit here. Uh, you know, if you're willing to call that squeeze, you know, the stack to pot ratio of just about one, you're going to expect Tyrone to probably just shove this flop, hope to get some some folds from something like Ace, King, or Jack. <laughs> Could take the free card, um, but if you're going to call here, you're going to want to fold out some better hands on the flop here, and let's see how Tyrone's going to play it. <gasps> Does take the free card and pops off the wheelie. Woo! Not just the wheelie, the draw to the steel wheelie also. <laughs> Which, as we can see, is not live, but nonetheless does have the backup of the flush draw to go with this straight. Machine.mn bets 240,000 and is pretty much pot committed at this stage with a set of threes. Oh, wow, yeah. the oh ball pairs on the river. <laughs> <laughs> and both players have to think that they are in the driver's seat here. The catbird seat. <laughs> and that is going to be a full double up for machine.mn. Bit of a cooler there. 2.9 million chips now. Tyrone left short as the blinds go up to 25,000, 50,000. We are playing 15-minute blind levels throughout this Sunday million. Bit of a tight fold here from... Uh, from Joe's favorite, Todd Salons. And that's actually going to be big problem for paid in the small blind here with Ace Jack and just 11 bigs. Uh, Machine surely going to come in for that standard raise. And this is no good. Ugh. They're dropping like flies. And Domination. Jack already folded. Bye. And it is over on the turn. Part D, 1785, out in 58th place, cashing for 1684, and we are down to 57 now. America, America, America. Tyrone with King Queen offsuit. Yeah, 13 and a half ish blinds here. I think it can play fine as a shove or as a min raise. Does elect to just raise. And given the rest of the hands at the table, we're going to have to see how Circo Zalis reacts in the big blind. Just a call and does not really connect with this board. And if Tyrone can continue, might get a fold, and we can move on to the next hand. No, checks it back. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised to see Tyrone get um, a little scared of continuing on this board. The last time uh, they continued was on that 8-9 jack board with the 7-8 and got check raise where uh, they probably should have checked back. In this situation, you know, technically you have a, raise, a range advantage as the aggressor, but this particular board of 7-8 can really hit that big blind complete and you don't want to get check shoved on by a seven or an eight or nine ten takes the free card now gonna bet and hopes to get the fold from the ace, ace high and does so nice delay there from tyrone We've got a blind v blind situation here. Jack six of diamonds for Serco. Completes, ship it to HK, checks. Flops top pair against the flush draw. I like this check back here from ship it. You're very, very under repped with the ace when it does come ace high. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. This eight might be a bit difficult for Serco to bluff on simply because ship it is going to have some eights calling that one bet on the flop um you know you're not going to fold out an ace you might fold out a king but circo does keep on telling the story now i hope oh God. wow i had a feeling that when um ship it hk just checked back the a6 that they were going to be a little bit tighter, a little bit more bluffable. 
Yeah, and these are the kind of mistakes that are going to compound and make it really difficult for you to win um, a big field like the Sunday Million and that 108,000 first place prize. Um, you got to be, you know, you got to hold on a little, little, little tighter there. Um, not a lot of hands beat you there, so yeah, I think that's a big mistake from Ship It Okay. So Al Hakim started the day as chip leader, still has the chip lead. Started this hand with just over four million. Is open to a hundred k. Damn, and Todd, Todd Salons gets it in with Ace Queen. Yeah, running into a big hand here, but I like to see that Al Hakim is opening it up a bit more. Um, you know, having seen the Queen Ten fold earlier, you'd think something like King Six suited would be a fold in earlier position. So maybe Al Hakim um, should really focus more about position than necessarily you know, the kind of mid-strength hand you want to open. There's really not a, much of a difference between King-6 suited and Queen-10 off, um, you know, but at the cutoff, Queen-10 off a great open. King-6 suited, you're, you know, you're you're trying to get away with something there, and right there running into the big hand of ace-queen from Todd, not going to happen. So round two, Serco with King-6 offsuit. Dama High gonna have one of those really awkward ace rag situations um, with those Dama High, bigs. more like yeah. Dama Hello, <laughs> more like Damn Ace High. <laughs> oh, nice. Also good. <laughs> um, you know, with this many chips, you don't really want to shove in Ace Deuce, but you don't want to just fold. So I, I like just going for the raise here, hoping that you can get through the blinds and does gets away with one. Certainly happy with that result. You don't really want to take a flop with Ace Deuce anyway. Cowboys. Yeah, ship it to HK with a premium starting hand. Not sure if they're going to get action, though, looking around the table. Everybody loves a good Janina in the big blind. That is true, <laughs> and Machine.mn is now the second biggest stack. Uh, Machine.mn, by the way, second at this table, third in chips overall. And yeah, I think there's a... Remaining now. Maybe like a 20 to 30% chance we see Machine... Uh, decide to enter this pot from the small blind. I think, as a general rule, in this situation against that stack, probably a fold, but we saw Machine uh, take in aggressive action from the small blind in the previous rotation, and it worked out so well with pocket threes. You don't really have any three-bet fold room, um, and it's probably you know a couple notches too low to peel, so good to see Machine uh, showing some discipline there and, and folding. Maybe feeling a bit grateful and lucky to have gotten that big cooler earlier and not want to get too out of line from the same position a few rotations later. Well, here's a good opportunity for Tyrone. Was left pretty short sure after that cooler versus machine. I think that this, uh, this sizing here is a bit unnecessary. You want to exercise some balance. You know, we saw him with the min raise with the king queen. Um, you know, you're, you're going to want to do that with the ace king as well. So people think that you have some folds. This just looks like, you know, you're trying to protect a big ace <laughs> and not get peels from something like jack 10 in the big. Yeah. So you're saying it's better to give hands like jack 10 in the big peels? Yeah, you, you, you give them the price, and it's it's not just about about that. I mean, it's it's also about um, you know you want people to to think that their ace track could be good and just just shove it in or their ace ten or whatever it is. When you make a three and a half x raise like that, oftentimes it will be um, you know a bit of a, a mistake from an amateur player that that doesn't want to see a flop. Maybe it's something that. You know, I think we've all maybe gone through and in some stages of our poker career where we're like, oh, I'm going to just raise it bigger with the ace king so they don't peel with these weak hands and crack my ace king. Well, you know, you have the best hand. You want to take a flop. You're still ahead of that jack 10 and you can, you know, maneuver according accordingly. I uh, want to quickly say hello to Bearded Dad and thank you for the viewer dump. Uh, Bearded Dad asks, is this live gameplay right now? Almost. We're on a 30 minute delay. So the Sunday Million 
Happens every week. It's a two-day MTT. So comes back on a Monday night with the last few tables. Came back tonight with 64 players. So play actually restarted at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We went live with the stream at 1.30 Eastern. So we're following the action cards up on a delay. Often people think when they see the title Sunday Million that all I'm watching is a, a replay of yesterday's event. But the Sunday Million for a while now has been a two-day tournament, and that gives us the opportunity to follow the late stages almost live with our Cards Up action. It's a replay of an event that happened 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Every time something happens. Man, if Tyrone here, this is amazing. Are you familiar with the work of Erica Badu? Yes. You know her song, Go Call Tyrone? That's a perfect poker reference. <laughs> of all the references but I would expect you to make. you can't use my phone. I have to be honest with you, Joe. Of all the references I'd expect you to make, Erica Badu is not one of them. I once shared a flight with Erica Badu. She'd been doing a tour with her band in Finland and she was flying to London from Helsinki and her and all of her musicians were on my flight. That I, that would be an amazing scene like James Hardigan, the only non Erica Badu band member on this plane just like looking around being like what's, what's going on here? <laughs> there were some uh, very interesting characters in her band I should say. I bet. Todd Zalon's willing to open it up here with the 9-8 suited just playing around 20 Five big blinds, 26. I like this, but not going to get through that stubborn Tyrone in the big blind. But you do get the two club flop. You have to imagine this pot's going to go Todd's way. Hot toddy. Notice that uh, Todd Salons is potentially offering a little shout out to our guest commentator this evening. Is that a unicorn avatar I see? <laughs> was it in the in in the twitch chat or the stars chat the unicorn it's just his avatar oh it's his avatar oh i thought he actually uh wrote something i thought it was a personal thing but yeah okay i'll take it ray maniac ray maniac Queen nine of spades, gonna see the free flop and get the one that they want. Two clubs on the board from Machine MN. Cook says, one of my best friends is a unicorn. His name is Charlie. That's cool. Can other people see Charlie? Ah, uh, boy. Wow. Nice one, Rayman. Yeah, not a great turn card here for Machine, but facing another bet from Ray Maniac might be able to just get away. Interesting decision to lead here. Maybe trying to freeze any future bluffs from Ray Maniac, but now you're just giving money to someone that, you know, has you pretty pipped in all the situations here when they have a pair or better interesting choice of word interesting there griffin when i think you really meant to say terrible <laughs> well ray maniac decides to raise the turn three hundred and fifty thousand. hey man you bet to find out where you're at now you know where you're at and now your cards can go at the muck wow makes oh, the call no the and manitoba machine is machine.mn gonna make the mistake of bluffing this river and i say it's a mistake because we can see that raymaniac oh, has boy. tripped queens i'm just a bluff machine Show me your trips for free. Actually, it's 425,000, and that's Fold. how much you're going to lose. 
Queen nine's out kicked here a lot of the time. Nope. No, no fault. Interesting way to play the hand. Is this going to be euphemism of the day? <laughs> Always has been. <laughs> There we go. Alakim actually getting a spot to, you know, open a hand under the gun that's probably, you know, right on the line there of what you want to find yourself opening under the gun. I think a lot of people are going to fold ace-10 under the gun, but with all those chips and everyone playing tighter than usual is going to get it through to the big blind. But Ray Maniac on a bit of a heater here if this 8-7 can hold. This is why you need to 5x at pre-flop with ace-10. Definitely some potential here for Al Hakim to win this pot. Electing to go with a half pot size bet on the flop. That Ooh. is cards. With 52 players remaining, the current payout is $1,684. There will be a jump in prize money when we're down to 44. And after winning that pot, our chip leader has been balanced off our feature table. Blinds are now 30-60, by the way, and will continue to go up every 15 minutes. 20 big blinds here for Merka. Oh, the check back with Ace-10. I think it's a bit too strong. You're going to want to get more money in the pot. I, I'm absolutely inc so incredibly impressed when people like trap with hands like ace 10 and ace jack and just always hit like a pair or trips uh, it's like such a skill they're not trapping <laughs> i mean it is gonna work for sixty thousand here you have to imagine ray maniac with that people jack. limp ace king and just just flop an ace like every time you tell me this Oh, wow. No, not a trap. Just checks back top pair. Cool, 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 cool. Guys, I hope you're uh, ready for my uh, commentary to, to be insufferable from now on, now that I'm a professional poker player. When did you actually become a professional poker player? This weekend, right? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. So... How on he wants to save it for the podcast, James. I know it's over the po I, I'm not quite sure how this accomplishment trumps cashing in the Bay 101 Shooting Star event. If you weren't going to go pro after that, why are you now a pro? Because that could have been a one-off, but now, um, ah. you know, now it's consistent. I cashed in every tournament this week in which I was not a bounty. That's fantastic. Pretty good. If this means all the bitching and whining stops, I'm all about it. Oh, God, no, no, no. That, But we're saving that for the podcast. Sorry. I have plenty to complain about. Don't worry. Good hand selection here from Ray Maniac attacking. Um, I like the sizing, too, a bit on the larger side, just trying to scare Machine off. But Machine has shown to be quite stubborn. So it might be a bit of an uphill battle. And, of course, we do see machine with the premium of ace queen but not a hand you really want to get in for 40 plus big blinds in the sunday million um you know with sub 50 people left but does elect to go for the shove thinking ray maniac does have some three bet bluffs is correct and now he just wastes a couple seconds we are switching and taking you to okay. another table and, and among what the players we have here are here. Dobrom and Scrouts. And wow, what a time to join this table. Scrouts getting it in with Jax. Uh, Dobrom seemingly getting a little bit out of line with King Deuce. Yeah, you got to block mean, that baby out. <laughs> as far as hand selection is concerned, if you're going to go for a straight bluff from the big blind it's kind of nice to have that sort of like single blocker sort of situation you're going to get a lot of folds from some pretty strong holdings when you three bet from the big blind because it does look so strong something like ace 10 ace jack even 
Um, you know, I don't think Scrouts is thrilled to get it in there for 30 big blinds. Either, either of those hands, um, of course, happen to run into the pocket jack. So I don't necessarily think it's indicative of Dobrum being a weak player. If anything, might um, might be pretty pretty damn good. And well, let's find out now. He really is, because they then get pocket aces. A lot of your babies very proud of you on Twitch, Joe, for what you accomplished this weekend. I still don't know because it's I haven't seen the podcast, which you're going to talk about it. But I saw rumblings. I follow you on Twitter. There's something about this and that. A lot of people very excited. I didn't do the thing where I, like, constantly updated my Twitter about what was happening because um, I had people do that for me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's part of it. It's true. It's true. I actually grew to appreciate how much focus it requires and how, oh boy, we got top pair, top kicker against a flush draw. And there it is. Boom on the turn. Redraw to the bigger flush for 403 Canada. You know, I don't like to suggest that someone deserves to lose, but... <laughs> Uh, 403 Canada does not deserve to win this hand. You can't just flat call from the big blind with something like Ace King. You're playing 20 big blinds. You're going to get so many folds on a shove. Sometimes you're going to get called by worse. You've got to take your licks here with Ace King if you happen to lose preflop. And now is in a situation with just pot left. I think if, if it's someone is passive enough that, uh, you know, they're, they're willing to just, I was going to say, I think that they have a gear to fold there. Um, but you know, a, a hand that you should have just won the sort of raise and the blinds and annies and instead now just has 15 big blinds. Please don't make the same mistake with ace-queen. This hand needs to go in Please against do. What, I, what I would assume would be a Dobrum open. And might be a bit too many chips for Dobrum to call, especially if they have a read that 403 Canada is particularly tight. There it is. But the quick shove... I don't think it's an automatic call from Dobrum. Let's see how they decide to respond. I think it's pronounced Dothbrum. Hmm. <laughs> Dobrum? Dobrum. And as you can see, the pause. Wow. Taunting. What kind of read can be made from making it rain? Feels a lot like Ace Queen. Then again, I can see the hold cards. Yeah, you're not doing great against this range, especially if Dobrum has been playing with them for a while, knowing how tight 403 Canada probably is based off the Ace King hand. So I think that's a good fold. We, of course, saw it would have been a flip, but, you know, 403 Canada has Queens there, Jacks, so often. I mean, that was great advertisement playing those Kings so badly. Sorry, Ace King. That didn't go to showdown yet, so they won't know for another 25 minutes or so. But yeah, absolutely. Woo, fair fight. Everything coming up clubs today. And if Tacky is willing to complete here from the big blind for under 20 big blinds with King-9, which I think is, is fine. I think it's probably right on the line. King-8, you might want to fold here against an early position open. Certainly going to be ready to just get it in when you flop top pair, whether that's a check raise or a check shove. Could see a call, um, but Speedy also can't be, um, you know, folding here with the nut flush draw. Is going to go for that near 3x raise. Tacky to Rivers. I guess has to decide. Mm, Takito. Well, this, I figured Tacky to Rivers would either stick it all in or fold there, but actually just called. 
Yeah, Speedy just calling. I don't I don't love this. I think sometimes a player is going to be check raising the flop, maybe see where they are with a seven or eight, maybe some bluffs. So you just want to stuff it in with the ace deuce. They're not going to, they shouldn't have a very nutted range. They're not going to have pocket kings. They would have raised pre flop. Sevens and eights, really hard to have. Um, so sometimes they have a king, you get it in, and, you know, sometimes you get there and sometimes you don't. But now yeah. you're facing a pot size shove on the river and, and you know that you're in trouble. You got to fold. Yeah. Rosero pointing out that we have not one but two Joker references at this particular table. Diego Ugh. paying tribute to Heath Ledger and Scrout referencing the Joaquin Phoenix movie. No one ever references Cesar Romero as the Joker. That's true. Being your friend, uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talk about commitment to a role. Cesar Romero could not even be asked to shave off his moustache underneath the makeup. There you go, Rosero. Noting that as well in chat. Yeah, they didn't uh -oh. have the dodgy CGI technology that they could later use in Justice League. Tacky to Rivers uh -oh. all in with King Queen. And why the slow roll? Scrout, oh, come sorry, on. Here's Johnny. Nope. And that is going to be a table close. So we have a table change switching to pick up on the chip leader. Or should I say former chip leader, Al Hakim QQ, now down to 3.2 million. No switching. longer number one. Super Samboy, who is also at this table, is the current boss with 4.2. The video game character, right, Griff? That red thing? Yeah, that is something boy. I bet that the chat will be able to help help us out. Uh, something boy. What is it, chat? Super Meat Boy. Thank Super you, Meat Boot Boy. Booty. Yummy. Oh, you know what? I should have looked at the name. It would have been a dead giveaway. Super Sam Boy. <laughs> I knew it was something boy, but mm. I kept thinking of Sack Boy from uh, Little Big Planet. Mm -hmm. Nice little river here for Super Sam Boy. Come on, let it go. Come on. Come on. You don't want no part of this. Ooh. Oh, my Al goodness. Hakeem AA. Now, this is going to be really tough for Kuklis because I think that there's a good argument to just call against this open, playing almost 40 big blinds here. But the problem is that right there is if Kayo goes all in for those, you know, four effective big blinds, now you're sitting there, um, you know, with your 37 and just folds the ace king. Ooh, I think that's pretty tight. I think that that's probably a, a bit of a mistake long term. But in this particular situation, it is aces as a decision. And sevens do have outs. Not Doesn't enough. Connect, though. Al Hakim back up over 3.5 million. Still so familiar. Got to figure out where I know that face from. And Diego actually going to get away with one here. This ace eight offsuit under the gun for just under 10 big blinds. It's probably it's close. I mean, with the way that the blinds can go up in this thing, I mean, you know, I think you want to shove ace 10, certainly ace nine, sometimes ace eight, maybe a bit loose, but gets away with it because no one has anything. And you really love to see that with the blinds coming right into you. Lots of respect for that fold. Now, Kuklis, don't fold. Maybe Kuklis just hates ace king and open folds this. this. <laughs> uh, now, does the mistake of the too big of an open doesn't want to see a flop. 
Queen 10 does, though. Man, so huge! Just 43 remain from a starting field of over 9,100. Sunday Million brings out players. Now that I'm a pro, I'm going to have to start figuring out where I'm going to relocate to and start playing the Sunday Million every week. Chicken! Diego, not a fan of the huge rays. He's not wrong. Uh, yes. We should have referenced, by the way, that uh, before the sevens aces hand played out, we were already down to 44 players. So everyone has now benefited from the jump in prize money. $2,320 is the current payout, and it will stay at that level until we get down to 26. This situation here is really... Oh. Oh. And Nito Diaz actually might have an opportunity to get away from oh now <laughs> as we can see the overflat from andrew 1963 and the lead diego actually getting max value here might have gotten a fold for uh you know nine yeah. big blinds and now andrew near drawing dead so diego doubles up to 1.4 million average stack right now is around 2.1 million so we are playing around Wow, was that a 25 big blind average? Deep is what you're saying. Five, eight, seven, ten, check. Nobody has anything. What's going on? Weird. Actually, my back close to Closer to 30 bigs. I thought we were at 40, 80. Actually, we're at 35, 70 at the moment. Kuklis didn't want to face that check shove from King X and 8X on the flop. Electing to go for a delayed continuation bet, and it's going to work. Now, I do know a player called Andrew1947. I don't know Andrew1963. I also don't know why there are so many people called Andrew who chooses their screen name, their <laughs> actual name followed by the year of their birth. Maybe it's a pact that the, you know, cult of Andrews all make with each other. You know the rule. If you make a poker name, you got to put the year. Maybe they named themselves after <laughs> Prince Andrew in the year he turned 50. That's super dumb, but a good guess. And you know, because he, he was so old. Just a flat from Andrew here, and this is uh, going to work wonders. So some tricky play. Was Prince Andrew <laughs> even born in 1963? Don't poke holes in his joke, James. Oh, here we go. Imagine Andrew Folds now calls it off. And Barry. no ace, no nine. Andrew, 1963, gets a full double up through Al Hakim. And we referenced that Al had lost the chip lead. Al is now 25th on the leaderboard. Super Samboy playing from Malta, still number one right now with close to four and a half million. Guys, I'm not going to lie. That joke um, was, well, I was thinking of Prince Philip, not Prince Andrew. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I, I no, literally I, was, I, I literally couldn't follow it. I'm sorry. No, thank you. No, you you did really well, considering I, it made no <laughs> sense whatsoever. You know, with a name like Al Hakim QQ, you would have thought he would have seen that hand coming. Because <laughs> Andrew had Queens. Yeah, no, you no, do no, feel really thanks. dumb, right? Thanks for <laughs> providing the explainer at the end there, Griffin. <laughs> big elimination, though. Actually, a big call from Nito Diaz, calling upwards of 13 big blinds with just ace-five suited, facing the comment 
all in from the button who had pocket fours won the race so big call big result willing to go for it now over 40 big blinds yeah no comment out in 41st place and that means 40 players now remain so we start the day with 64 24 eliminations in the first 45 minutes of play playing down oh. to a winner tonight Al Hakim, what are you doing, buddy? Um, he's you got to get those chips back, Griffin. Are you nuts? Oh, just... Have you ever played poker before? You lose a pot, then you have to play every pot. Oh my pot god, so it you works! Get those chips back. What are with these baby pair three bets from people? Just, just call or it's you know, it's out of position. But hey, it worked. It it almost it actually worked the other time with pocket threes as well. So maybe they're doing something that uh, I don't know about. Cash fish. Ace five. What do we call this again? The sour sourdough? Artisanal sourdough. Artisanal, sourdough. artisanal sourdough. sourdough. So wait, what's the club's one? Or no, all the ace five suited are Correct. Correct. Artisanal. Okay. And if they're unsuited, it it's basically kind of little standard. Bunch of pretty playable hands here. Um, this three bet I do like from Nito Diaz, recognizing that Cash Fish is going to have some raise folds. Got those two blockers with the King Queen. Super Samboy shouldn't ever really be trappy here. Going to have a lot of hands like Ace 10 suited, Ace Jack off, which are going to have a tough time facing a big squeeze. Nito Diaz has impressed me so far on this table um, with the ability to make big calls all in preflop and finding a good sort of squeeze spot there so early favorite for me also something to be said about willing to go after the chip leader who has just entered the pot uh when you have a good amount of chips so good acquisition there Just want to do a quick shout out to the poker stars dealers right just tireless never make a mistake no flipped cards people don't even tip which i think is a little messed up but hey best dealers in the business here so fast the rate of play now obviously joe to go behind the scenes at poker stars everyone knows that you and i recorded a number of stock lines of commentary right for those winning moments videos that yeah. reference feels like it's on tape and every like four or five weeks you'll press play <laughs> on your kind of shout out to the poker stars dealers. Uh didn't they know this was for the live tournaments only? <gasps> Interesting pod here. Three ways to the flop. It went checked around. Um you do see that Super Sam boy did have a gutter on the flop, but recognizing that Buster Chair is gonna have a lot of hands that are on a jack nine texture. Um, so elected not to bet because there's a lot of good turn cards you can see for free. That will probably get both hands out. So a nice hand there from Super Sam Boy. I like that delay continuation bet. New favorite. Sorry, you're off of Neto Diaz already? Neto Diaz is old news, pal. Wow. Wow, you are so fickle, Griffin. <laughs> I'm always after the, the next hot thing. I want to sign the next guy, you know? Okay, well, let's see how serious this gets Neto with ace king al hakim with the snowmen's num 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 okay if nito diaz finds a way to win this hand he's back in you're okay. my number one guy then nito jeepers I mean, imagine like, being one of Griffin's kids <laughs> just switching back go on and tour, forth wow. yeah. who I the mean, favorite is several times funny. a day. Griffin's like a Hollywood executive. You know the old <laughs> adage, you're only as good as your last movie? It's like you have to have won the last hand in order for Griffin to like give you any kind of respect or kudos. You should put Griffin in charge of the team pros for one year and see how many roster changes he makes. <laughs> well, will you still be in awe of Neto if he wins the hand now. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I did say, yeah, he'd be my number one guy. I do have a question, though. Nito Diaz is not the same person as uh, the ace six versus queen nine, right? That was a different table or different person? Because they're in the same seat. 
Ow. We have changed table a couple of times. Okay, I think it's yeah, because if it's if it's, that's the same person, I'm I'm out on Nito. Veld, how's you out? Well, I like the way you took that news. You're back yeah. in. <laughs> Whenever I hear things like that, I think of it's always sunny. You stole my credit card. It shows leadership. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, strap in for the sickest and classicest of races. Super Sandboy, our chip leader, has opened with Ace King. Catfish Tea with Queens. Now, how is Andrew going to respond to Ooh, this Andrew. three bet? Remember, Cashfish is attacking a chip lead open. So could have some bluffs here. You know, Super Sandboy is going to open something like, as we saw, King 10 off. But Andrew does fold. I think that's the right decision. And we are going to go to the flop. And, and River. he's taken now. <laughs> Cashfish is not going to fold the queens. Okay, good. And it's a king high oh, flop. And a queen Bye. out of the deck because we can see. And that will be the end cards. of Cashfish as we go across to what was our original feature table and check in on players like Mirka, Machine.mn, and damn Ace High. Good to see Tyrone still alive, although super short. Chance here, though, with Aces. And Ace King suited. Booyah. Do you know why? This is aces versus ace king suited because blockers aren't real. Look at the two kings folded and everything too. Oof. Woof. Um, after winning no that, one, only one diamond though. On after Sorry, winning that hand at the other table, by the way, Super Sandboy has increased their chip lead six point five million. Worth observing that Super Sandboy in for four bullets. Now, Ray Maniac in the big blind here. If they recognize that Scrouts has been opening a lot, not a bad hand, hand spot to just sort of shove. You have 26 big blinds. You know, Tyrone could be putting in a ton of different hands here with only five bigs. I think you might want to fold eights here because it is under the gun that Scrouts is raising, but you don't want to just call. You want to shove or fold. Does fold, and we are going to see a three diamond by the... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Johnny. Is going to be an ace high flush for Tyrone 1995, who has doubled up through Scrouts. A lot of ace kings today, I got to say. Yeah. A lot of this, ace kings. This is where they all went. Because <laughs> I didn't see any this week. <laughs> a lot of king nines I saw. Folded them all. I, I wish. I wish oh, I had king nine. Cashed every event I played, but never got dealt <laughs> ace king. Would have loved to see cards like that. <laughs> Just wait. Just wait at the podcast. God, <laughs> I'm thinking of canceling it at this rate. It's so hard to keep quiet right now. Ooh, fair fight on the flop. 52.8% for Merka and their ace king high. 47.2% for the machine. The Manitoba machine. We got a table filling in here. Great opportunity here for Machine to take a free card. I believe that Machine may have been the ace six culprit. Oh, oh. oh. spade on the river. So we've got top pair with a solid kicker up against Machine's queen high flush. Gross. But hey, Joe, Remember. from Mirka's perspective, how can my opponent have a flush? I've got the ace of spades. I've got a key Correct. blocker. That's why ace I have to call him. Yeah. If only blockers were actually real, maybe that would have helped. Yeah. Well, just a quick update on what's happening at the other tables. Zappolution from Germany has just taken the chip lead, 6.6 .6 million, just ahead of Super Sandboy, who's got 6.4 million. And 36 players remaining now. Where the hell have you been, Germany? Been talking you up for years. 
I think it's been a while since we've seen a German winner. At least one of our streams. Be a nice change to see some of the Germans get some poker money. Right? <laughs> They've had it tough. Yeah. Been a rough road. Yeah, it's interesting to see Tyrone fold those threes in late position, playing just about 12 big blinds, simply because we saw Tyrone willing to shove for about 870,000 under the gun at 50k big blind, um, but not willing to shove that smaller pair with less people to get through. So um, maybe it's just now you're starting to get, get in the thick of it and 36 people left doesn't want to take that risk. Let's see what happens here. We've got a pair of fours against two pair and Al Hakim, start of day chip leader, wins the last hand of the session. And we go on break. 36 players remaining in this week's Sunday Million from a starting field of 9,104. Total prize pool, $1 million, $108,000 up top. And right now, as we just mentioned, it is Zapolution from Germany, who is the favorite to win that top prize. Chip leader with 6.47 million. As we go on break, guys, uh, let's catch up on what is happening right now. So, Joe, I appreciate that you don't really want to talk too much about the last few days, but we can just reveal that you were down in San Diego. You were a live poker series. You did play a number of tournaments. You've now back driven back to L.A. to your side of the PokerStars arena. Um, is there anything you can tease us with that we might hear more about come the new episode on Thursday? Sure. I, here, I'll tee up a bunch of things right now. Not only was there poker, I, I played four events. Uh, I did cash in two of them. I don't think that's giving away too much. Did run relatively deep in one of them. More specifics on that during the podcast. But to focus on the social aspect of things, I had a really fun week because in addition to having me as an invited guest, they also invited uh, a very popular Twitch streamer named Jake Grenader. He was there as well as uh, Tyson Apostle and Boston Rob, two very popular Survivor uh, winners and have been on multiple seasons of Survivor. And it was really fun getting to hang out with those guys. And we did go on a little bit of an adventure. One of the nights, a random fan invited uh, Tyson and Rob to come to a party on the beach. And without even, like, it went to his, like, other messages folder on Instagram. And without even reading it, uh, Tyson and Rob and I decided that we were going to go. Um, <laughs> so I will tell more about that story uh, on the podcast this this week. Cool. Uh, one other thing to tease for this week's podcast. On Thursday afternoons, we have been looking back at some of the old PokerStars TV shows from like 10 or 11 years ago. The LAPT, the Latin American Poker Tour, seasons two and three. And thrilled to say, Joe, you made it happen. Aniel Guillen who has been across all of those shows, who was a member of Team Pro back in the day. Uh, he's going to be joining us on the podcast this week as we wrap up Retro and I guess get his recollections of, for want of a better phrase, the golden years of Latin poker. The glory days. We should probably learn how to say that in Spanish. Yeah, you know, what can I say? I've just, and I've known his wife for a long time, so... You know, he's doing a personal favor for me coming on the show this week. Uh, Aniel, super, super nice dude. Uh, and I'm also, you know, I don't think I've had a conversation with him in a long time. Uh, I remember back in the day when he was first on the tour, his English wasn't so great. And I'm assuming now, given that his wife's Australian and he more or less lives there, uh, that he's come a long way. So I'm interested in hearing more about his journey uh, from like what was considered probably the poker glory days for him. And I assume, but now his life's got to be... Uh, better in many yeah. ways now that he's you know married and has a kid on the way so it, it should be one of the few times that we hear about uh someone's glory days maybe uh getting better uh over the last 10 years um griffin back when you were traveling the live poker circuit pretty much full time did you ever make it down to that part of the world did you ever play an lapt event that's a good, good, good question i don't know if i played an lapt but i did play a yeah was it an LP, it might have been it might have been uh, what was it? I played something. In well, which country commerce? did you go commerce? to? Commerce. Oh, oh, you're talking about like uh, South America. Yeah, I'm talking about like south uh, of the border. He doesn't mean the, the commerce Los does Angeles not. Sorry, I'm Griffin. sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. L.A. I heard. 
No, I don't think I ever played any poker uh, like out in in South America. I play, I went I went to Brazil for like a Counter Strike thing way back in the day. We got invited by this uh, you know rich owner of a of a Brazilian team for a boot camp, which was very very memorable for a couple of weeks. Uh, that was really cool. But that's the only time I ever really spent in uh, in South America. Cool. Well, I, I tell you what, we're gonna finish with this week joe in addition to the final event from season three of the lapt there's another one of those random team pro challenges one of those cash games uh where last time neil channing was the random dude in the game this time it's terence chan so i'll be thrilled to see terence playing some poker on this week's stream so make sure you check out retro uh we will be hosting that stream on thursday uh, which is at 3 p.m uk time 4 p.m. at Central European Summer Time. Right now, we're going to take you back to the action in this week's Sunday Million with 36 players remaining. I'm going to take a break, but don't worry. Joe and Griffin are here to handle proceedings. Thank you very much, James Hardigan. Welcome back, my babies. Uh, Griffin, do you think the EPT stands for England Poker Tour? <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> Back live-ish with the Sunday Million, 9,100 entries total, 36 players remaining, final four tables, $108,000 to the eventual winner. Relatively short average, so we should see plenty of action. Pocket fives for Buster Chair in the big blind. Looks like someone's not back from break yet. Is a, is a Buster Chair a kind of chair? Um, not, not to my like, knowledge, but it could be, I'm not, like I'm not really on, like a chair guy. If you went on like Kijiji and looked for buster chairs, yeah, hold kind on. Of chair. sure. I'm just curious. Buster chairs for sale. Mm, I don't, oh, no price buster chairs. Oh, wait, that's me, yeah. hold on a second. No, there is a buster chair. The buster chair is an impressive button tufted curved back occasional <laughs> chair designed for style and comfort. Oh, there you go. What's an occasional chair? Oh, dude, a buster chair. Okay. It's like, you know, have you ever like um, pictured like a bunch of old men, like at a club, like smoking cigars and like drinking brandy? Out of, yeah, that's yeah. Like the, it's like a big puffy leather chair uh, who is all in. Yeah. Uh, Super Sam boy. Probably not going to call it off with 10 high, but we'll see. Yeah. Great spot here uh, for the chair that busts. Um, hopefully not for him. Getting it through there. Going to see a fair bit of wide opens from Super Samboy with that stack. Seems to know a little bit what they're doing. That's a good Look, I don't want to take too much attention away from the poker here as we see Super Samboy late, late, latest position with King Queen. But we, maybe we can help out Nathan here. Nathan says, I got a mate in here and I'm scared of whispering to him. I ain't spoke to him for like months and I know him from this channel and I ain't been in here for months now. And I'm too scared to talk to him. What can I do? If you're the person Nate's talking about, as as Diego goes all in with the sevens, are we going to see a flip? Maybe you could just reach out to Nate and let him know it's okay. Yeah, this is really on the line here for Super Samboy. Um, I think that you're going to need to call hands like this against some all-ins uh, just to protect your opens. I mean, that's that's kind of, you know, that's, that's well above the average of the hands you're opening there if you're raising hands like 10-9. So I think King-Queen's probably a call for anything under... A million there, mm -hmm. um, but it was just, I think it was just over that in Super Samboy. Um, maybe, oh, this is going to be trouble, though, for about 17 big blinds for Diego. Yep, call sure is. One over card for Diego. Catches the five. There's the ace on the turn. Sorry, pocket sevens. Having the best hand sometimes sucks. Switching down to 33 now. And Machine Minnesota still going nuts. This time, three betting from the small blind against the King Jack Open of Yamashita. Yeah, I think this uh, this is a pretty good spot here to take against Yamashita, really putting them in that prison of having to shove it all in in the Sunday Million with 33 left with King Jack off or fold. Um, does elect to fold. So nice spot for Machine, definitely playing pretty well over the last few rotations. Machine Minnesota now with the sourdough store variety. Ace five off suit on the button. Suited spaded Kate 
in the big blind and here for Scrouts. Aces all around today. Top pair for Machine. King eight suited, drawing near enough dead on this flop. No spade, no pair, just some backdoor straight, some backdoor two pair trips possibilities, and 0% on the turn. King High's probably good, though, bro. Get the showdown. How about another joke, Marie? Must really like that movie to make that your display, huh? Is that is that a Joker reference? Yeah, that's what we were talking about, right? Well, I saw the Joker face before, but I didn't realize what the other thing was. No, they were saying that the, the chat was saying there's two Joker references, and I think this is the one. How about another joke, Murray? As in, like, what he says, what Joaquin Phoenix says, character says to Murray. I mean, that... The fact that people like that movie is one of the great mysteries of our generation. Pocket Queens for Dama. Hello, ladies. And just a min race. Scrouts can maybe justify. No, not even King Nine in the small blind. Nope, nope, nope. Raise and take it. Pocket no. Queens now for Scrouts. And Ace 10 here going to find a fold, which you like to see. Scrouts now. And Merka 2007, someone we've seen for much of this second day of the Sunday Million. Running out of lives, Joe. Just 155,000. That ain't even two big blinds. Merka. F yeah. I can't even run, r rub two big blinds together. I ain't got a... <laughs> I ain't got a big blind to pee in or, or a window to throw it out of. I don't know. That doesn't work that much, but... Queen's faring very well. Yeah, and I think that this is a... Pretty clear mistake from Mr. Rao. You never want to really be calling three bets here with pocket four, set mining, playing out of position. And with that check back from Scrouts, might think that you're up against something like Ace King. And that is a big trap to fall into. Yep. Don't do it, Mr. Rao. Even think... if he has ace king, he can hit a ten or ace or king or queen. <laughs> See, you have check, just check. created a pot of two point one million. You didn't need to. What if you're just? What if you don't think they're on ace king? You're just trying to hit a four. Better or worse? It's all like that Joker movie. <laughs> Apparently, that scene where he climbs into the refrigerator was totally improvised. Genius like that. What are you going to do? You got to put it on film. Machine Minnesota raising 9-8 suited, 8-10 suited for Scrouts. And Mr. Rao just with one more chip to see some store-bought sourdough. Seven, nine, tray, two hearts. Top pair versus two overs and a flush draw. Just the way we like it. This is how we like it. Takes the free card and doesn't like to see that. Sometimes you're going to be winning with Ace-10 high here, but not too often. Machine often going to have better Ace highs sometimes. Mr. Rao going to have a lot of sevens and nines, sometimes a three. I think Machine's going to want to start protecting their hand just over pot size. Half pot size, pardon me. With that two pair. Scrouts, you didn't come this far to fold the turn, pal. Get in there. I want you to see a river. Get out there and hit a flush. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, so not a straight, but a flush for Scrouts. And in these situations, I feel like this Jack of Hearts in particular was is a very bad card for my pair of nines. Yeah. Yeah, the key here for Scrouts, don't get too greedy. 
Right. You don't really have any bluffs That's in your range greedy. here. You know, if you want to get a call from a hand like a nine, just bet something a little cutesy. But be like, hey, you want to see my hand? Here's 350,000. 350. I was going to say 350. I knew you were because you're a professional like me. Well, I mean, if anything, I'm you're no longer a professional. I've just hey, it worked. We're both idiots. <laughs> it worked. You didn't buy it. Apparently, there's only one pro at the table. And it's Scrouts. And that brings Scrouts all the that that Sprouts Scrouts' stack all the way up to five point eight million. Passing machine. Scrouts Scrouts. James Hardigan's supposed to be on break, but was immediately drawn back to the chat the second someone brought up the Godfather. He's like, ooh, he just drops his bowl of soup, comes back to the computer. <laughs> Ace King still doing quite well here. Domination situation. Jack needed for Yamashita. I wonder if you can get like word notifications on Twitch, you know, like just have the <laughs> right. chat open. Then if someone says like Godfather. And... Who said Fredo? <laughs> Did someone say Fredo? <laughs> Yes, Hippie H, there's a lot of sequels that are better than the original, but not so many that it's the rule. Like, the rule is sequels are generally worse, but... There you go, Frodo, that's a good one. The The Two Towers was better than... Uh, no, 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 listen, I, no, 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 you can... No, that's just patently untrue. Merka, double up. Staying alive. How could you think Two Towers was more, was better than... Way better. Alice it was Alice way Alice better. Alice was, like, tight. It established the world. It was way more emotional. The, the second one is still, a, like, an amazing film, but it's, like... The first one is them just bit, walking but... for three hours, and then at the end, when you're expecting the end of a movie, they're like, hey, let's just walk some more. What, what are you talking about? They have, like, an amazing battle with the orcs in the forest, and it's all emotional, and Boromir's, like, getting hit by the arrows. It's like... Doosh. He's still fighting. He's protecting, and he's like, he's like the little ones. You have to protect. It was amazing. What are you talking about? Two towers was like, was just, ugh, no way, man. That's right. The battle for Helm's Deep is way better than the. No, 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 no. Ira Clipper Hofferman House Two is better than the original House. I agree with that. House. House is a horror movie from the like, eighties. I want to say. Oh well. Let's see. What else? Down my high pocket kings. Empire, obviously. We got that one. Superman 2, way better than Superman. That's Star true. Trek 2, way better than Star Trek. Also true. Never seen it, though. You've never seen Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. I've never seen The Wrath of Khan. No. Oh, it's so good. I was a Star Trek kid, and uh, just I never got around to it. It's so good. What a terrible flop for everyone. Ace nine five pair of five for Scrouts. These Ace magnets. Oh, playing live poker for the week in two hundred dollar buying events. Ace magnets. That's a phrase I heard a lot. AC1212 chimes in and says, I wouldn't really count sequels that are based on books, as it is just using different source material rather than creating a new story. Okay, that's. I think that's fair, although I agree you read it in the correct voice. <laughs> wow, four is getting real sticky here. Uh, machine is... Wants to go down in flames in a glory and just he oh. wants backdoor wheels and pop-off sets and... Ooh. Three spades on the turn. Now, he, he the machine will probably take the, the free card here, but a bet, you know, might get it done. But you don't want to be check shoved on here, betting nearly half of Damahai's remaining stack. Oh my gosh, the name again, Joe. Damn, ace high. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
Wow. Work. Damn me, Sai. Wow, please. I wow. really hope that Dama High is not watching this stream. Because <laughs> in 30 minutes, they're going to punt the rest of this stack if they don't before that. And, I mean, no fault of, of their own. Honestly, if I had pocket kings and I played the hand like that, I would fold on the turn as well. It just, give me, please. You expect your opponent there to give me, please. I am just a, a white tiger. I am going extinct. <laughs> Mercus stack just represents the dwindling population of white tigers. Sad. There's a very strong argument that the Dark Knight is better than Batman Begins. I happen to prefer Batman Begins, but I understand why people like the Dark Knight better. Look, you've got the Sting, too. Far superior to the Sting. Caddyshack, too. Blows Caddyshack out of the water. Fletch lives, as long as we're talking comedies. Oh, boy. Here we go. Big old flip incoming. Oh, yeah. Scrouts shoving the button with the Neeners, the Stars Nuts. Mirka sitting there with the three big blinds. You got to let it go, pal. It's Todd. Todd so long if they don't hit. Uh, and the river the, is so a king. Classic. Double up. Such a classic flip. Ginger Kahlo says, what about anime? And that's going to get them a ban. <laughs> Don't bring up anime that, yeah. in my streams. Thank you. You bring up Thank anime, you. that then you're going to get a banime. Yeah, you get banime. Thank you yeah. for your comment. It's like we're talking about like what food is delicious, and someone's like, hey, have you ever tried crackers? <laughs> How about some crackers with capers on them? Jack eight versus king queen. What do you call uh, crackers with capers? Crappers. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, I thought the ex I thought the movie The Expendables was unwatchable, and I thought Expendables two was fantastic. I haven't seen a single Expendables. And I like action movies. I have a bunch of weird gaps like that, though. I filled one of them the other day, and I'm reminded of it because there's someone in the chat rocking the name. I saw Highlander for the first time the other night. Oh, we I watched Highlander relatively recently for the podcast. The movie doesn't really hold up. I am no, out. it doesn't. Not much. <laughs> that was. Uh... I was like, is this the movie everyone's <laughs> always talking about? This Wait, is... you hadn't seen it. No. Oh, wow. So we were in the same boat. Why didn't we just watch it together? We never hang out anymore. We will soon, buddy. <laughs> as soon as that vaccine gets shipped to the rest of the world, as soon as America stops hoarding vaccines. <laughs> Dama High gets the shove through with Ace-Jack suited, picks up Ace-Jack offsuit on the very next hand. America. Oh, but yeah, Ace King for Merka. Shoot, didn't even see that. Hey, don't sleep on Merka. Kid's got a lot of potential. Oh, Merka, Merka, Merka. He just needs to get it going a little bit. Get a couple double ups. Ace King holding for now just really has to fade the two remaining jacks, huh? Couple yeah, running Flops hearts. Don't get much better. No backdoor straights. No backdoor flushes to beat, beat beat yours. Just dodge that jack. Just dodge that jack. Although I do kind of want the river to be like a queen, so Merka like thinks they've lost. You know, right? <laughs> it's like the queen. You're you're done. Queen you're jack, like clearly man. someone has it's to have queen. a queen. King, king, yeah, king queen. Yeah. You're done. Queen for for you know, or yeah, like or a club like a queen of clubs. Yeah, Queen of Clubs, you're just like, you just walk away from the computer. Oh, you see the bet, too? And you're just like, oh, okay, great. This guy's the machine just has an eight. When you really, 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 really want to win the side pot. I mean, damn a high. It's, you know, he's sitting there with his ace high. Damn. Hey, high, ace high again. Oh, oh no! 
<laughs> no. No. I'm out of here, guys. No, hey, that, that was, so that was fun. But, like, aren't real. We were joking. We were joking about the Jack coming. We didn't want it to come. Ugh. That is so sick. Uh, Merka fought valiantly. Oh, we got an apology, though. I like that. And they wrote the whole name out. Sorry, Merka 2007. Good luck, bro. And you know who's also another loser in this hand? Damn A High, who, who yeah. was bet out of the pot for no reason and would have would have rivered the jack to get up to two million. Poker is a cruel sport. So cruel. How about another joke, Murray? Ace Queen offsuit, UTG, <laughs> or as we call it in our home game, FTA, first to act. FTA, first to act. This doesn't seem like a spot that Machine Minnesota gets away from. What is uh, KEKW? I've never thought to ask. It's like that. lol. <laughs> like that? Is that what it's supposed to be? It's 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 an emote that you just can't see. It's a laughing person. Oh, okay. I think it's the, I think it's the guy from remember that guy who's like tell the toothless guy on the Italian talk show telling the story and he's like crying, he's laughing so yeah, hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I great. think it's him. Okay. Oh nice. Okay, I like that guy. Keck W. Keck At W. The fact that you don't know your memes. Can we trust this guy, Tom? He's uh he's peddling some extension. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I don't download things. Tom's all right. Okay, good. I'm going to buy one of these buster chairs, though. <laughs> Over here. How much are they? These can't be cheap. Ooh, they have one in baby seal skin. There we go. There we go. Do you actually have, do you have any idea how soft uh, baby seal skin is? I, I don't. don't. I want to find out. I mean, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Oh no, the Keck W guy passed away in April. I'm not gonna lie, like the, the amount of wheezing he did when he was supposedly healthy. I don't think COVID <laughs> was probably gonna be a, a, like a great. Yeah. Thing for him. But he will, you know, live on forever, in our hearts. Yeah, he's a legend. Legends yeah, never die. Legend. Yeah, I've seen so many. That, that's got to be my favorite of those sort of memes where they put different text to it. I'm, I much prefer to the to, to the Hitler one um, and any others. That one was the best. The Hitler screaming one got a little old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one was just, just great. Scrouts versus Mr. Rao. This is a monotone flop. And it's bottom pair for Mr. Rao. Scrouts with nothing but king high, no spade. And Mr. Rao checks on this monotone board. Going to expect to see a continue here from Scrouts. Going to want to try to win this pot. Mr. Rao, if they're willing to continue preflop with just jack four off, going to expect to see a continue. But and getting... Oh Clipped my goodness, up on the turn. it is, bra, bra, bra. It oh, is bueno. a pair of sixes on the turn for Scrouts. This is incredibly exciting to outturn your opponent. To really turn the tables on them. Turning the tables indeed, Griffin. You can hear us really... Firing in the enthusiasm. We're just so excited to be here for this Over particular this hand. Monotone <sighs> flop. And the rich get richer. Yeah, yeah. Sprouts up to 5.2 million. Machine Minnesota at 6.4. And that's good enough for the chip lead for the Minnesota machine scrouts second and chips right here, right at this very table. How lucky are we 28 players ago? We got number one and two here and Yamashita taking a spot. Boom. Assuming this limp can't be much and is correct. Yeah. Pretty aggressive here with the queen seven, but maybe just thinking, I don't see Mr. Rowe having a 
trap here. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these hundred and seventy thousand chips or hundred and twenty thousand chips. You know, it's funny, the first hour or so of this stream, hour and a half even, was so jam-packed with ace-kings, and we had a, you know, a wheel and a boat. So many big hands, but you can see sometimes the hand distribution. There is the other side of it. And in a tournament like the Sunday Million, especially this deep on day two, you don't have a lot of time. And this is actually where those players with maybe a little more experience... Um, a little more study in their game or, or just recognizing what you need to do in these big fields to win, playing a lot of hands, trying to find steals, go after those scared stacks. And, you know, someone like Super Samboy, we've seen a lot of that. You know, Machine MN certainly has played a couple of hands that we didn't think was particularly great, but at least they are staying very, very active. And, you know, that's why sometimes you see someone at these big Sunday Million final tables that maybe plays a little hectic and all over the place, but they're in there and if things go their way they actually win the tournament for the big prize so uh love to see with just 28 remaining someone like machine in there um got netto still in there i think so a lot of a lot of players that are going to be interesting to watch down the stretch yeah i think maybe a mistake that a lot of players might make if they're trying to like mimic a style like machine mns is you don't you don't do it enough uh, you know, if you're going to be that kind of player, you got to be that kind of player. Like, I know when I've attempted it, trips here for Ray Maniac. Uh, then when I've do, I'll, I'll like chicken out, right, by the river. I'll be like, ah, I, I check, right? And that's yeah. like probably the worst thing you can do is yeah. like uh, vacillate between ag aggressive and scared. I would say as a general rule, if you're trying to win a 9,000 player field like the Sunday Million, it's better to be uh, too aggressive than too passive. Because otherwise, you're always just going to have that story of how, oh, I finished, you know, 92nd and I lost a big flip when I was down to 15 bigs. But that's that's not how you win it. You're going to you're always going to run out of time in the Sunday Million. So you right. need to find other ways to acquire chips because you're going to lose 30 big blind all ins. Um, and if you haven't acquired by doing like little, little pushing, little inflection points, you're just, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to make it all the way. And we're all about going all the way here. Well, it's like they used to say back in the day, Griffin, if it's good enough to call with, it's good enough to raise with, right? Name of my book. <laughs> nice spot here for damn ace high again. <laughs> to pick up some chips. Luckily, three hands that almost certainly won't be matching that just over one million chip amount. And we are damn a high close to a pay jump. Yeah, 27 got to be another one, right? 28 and 27 make $2,320. But 26th makes just about $3,200. So about an $800 difference. If you can last two more spots. And we've got the nut flush draw versus the not flush draw. Quick fold from Todd Salons. Nice takedown there for Yamashita. Now this ace high, less ideal than the ace six. Probably going to be wanting to fold this one with five players to go. And does Ray Maniac with the sixes of the cutoff. Coming in for that raise. Oh, interesting. Naula says, is Dama high from Poland? If so, the name could mean Queen high because Queen is Dama and Polish. Let's see. Dama High is playing from Poland. Oh, man. Queen High. Well, there go all the Ace High jokes. <laughs> it was literally the best bit of the entire yeah, day. Yeah, that's thanks, really, really, really going to hurt this broadcast Elias to lose that one. Buzz but Killington. What can we do? With your research. And your Six Polish is good, research. and... 
firing. Hold on a second. Now these people are saying Q is Dom in Portuguese as well. Yeah, Dom means Q and Hunter. Okay, I get it. You guys are trolling us. Great. In Slovak also. Okay, guys. Wow. Is that, what does it mean in English too? <laughs> right? Is that what's next? You'd be like, oh, in America here, it's also. Yeah, Lithuanian. Sure. Whatever you guys say, guys. Okay. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Ooh, look at this limping from 9-3 offsuit. I don't know about that. How did you not learn your lesson from last time, Rao? Can you just get you just give up your small blind? Some queen in Danish too. Yeah, my shit. <laughs> what is Mister Rao doing? He's just gonna give. He's gonna get, give one small blind per hand. Row by row. Yeah, well, that small blind is now more expensive. Curly Master says Q is it actually Dama and anime? That is another ban. Thank you for your comment. Please don't bring up anime <laughs> in my streams. Uh, I have watched some good cartoons lately, but they're not anime. I'll tell you what cartoon you loved, Griffin. I'll tell you what you loved. Right? Even just hearing the word cartoon, I'll tell you what you loved. You loved Invincible. Yeah, I already told I, we had a big thing. We were talking about it in the chat uh, a couple weeks ago. Of course, I loved Invincible. So did you. I thought that Invincible. We've got we a pair go. of eights here for both Dama High and Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao may not give this up right away in position. Having the big blind lead out at this is a little suspect. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird hand here. And with just pot left, Damahai. Oh, Yamashita must be so pissed right now. <laughs> oh, we got tables filling in. That means we're at the final three tables as Neto Diaz joins our table here. 27 players left. We're on a pay jump. Trouble from Mr. Rao. You're going to expect your opponent here to have a great deal of nines in their hand. Um, happened to just have an eight, but with a better kicker. So good fold from Mr. Rao. Yeah, good fold indeed. All right, now we have a full table. We got a whole bunch of hands here. Ace 10 suited under the gun. Ace Jack suited on the button. King Queen in the big. I thought, Griffin, I thought Invincible, like many TV shows, had like four episodes in the middle that were like quite pointless. Um,. And then the episodes that actually drove the story were very good. Like there was just like a lot of repetitive building of things that didn't need to be drawn out so long. Mm. And also I had I had it, the second when they had that very violent scene at the end of the first or second episode, I already knew it was what the ending was going to be. Oh, that's too bad. The first one. Yeah. So we've got. The nut, flush draw, and two overs, plus the wheel draw. Also a wheel draw for Yamashita. King Queen does have live pairs they can hit. None of this is happening. How about a seven? How about it's always coming seven for everyone loves a chop pot? This is actually a great opportunity for Nito Diaz to try to win okay. this pot. Okay. Uh, all that particular texture and does go for it with just a quarter pot. Uh, of course, we see Machine has the ace, ten of diamonds, so it won't be folding, but... Uh, I don't blame Nito Diaz for repping on this board after seeing two checks. And with a straight on board and uh, a likelihood of having way more uh, sevens, Nito Diaz might try to go for this. Otherwise, oh, come on, Nito. otherwise we might be Nobody a little, loves a chop pot. Singing a little tune. Uh, 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 yeah, get ready. Warm it up. Uh, mm, Flick that bean. Banana broken boys. Beluga. A uh, bet of one million. Pretty Beluga. big bet here. Looks like exactly the kind of thing that's either a chop or a seven. That's what's great about it. Well, yeah, the problem is machine is going to have some sevens here. Pocket seven. A seven suited. Something like seven eight suited. And no there will be no song today. 
Neto Diaz, lack of time bank, factoring in at least somewhat there. And Machine MN continues to have a stranglehold over the chip lead, up over $7 million now. The cards are turning now, Joe. Two, we're seeing some premiums. How are you going to fold against a shove for just 12 bigs? You got the ace. You got the queen. You're suited. You have hearts. You're not. You have hearts. You just 3X'd. Kuklis. Oh, Kuklis. Does There's the call. Call. I see two aces folded. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. Queens hold double up for Mr. Rao. Let's see how, how tilted Kuklis is. If they raise 9 8, they're on stone tilt. Kuklis. If you raise 9 8, you're on stone tilt. Kuklis. If you raise 9 8, you're on stone tilt. You only have nine bigs. Don't do it, Kuklis. You got time. There's 26 left. You know someone's gonna wake up with a uh, big but hand. Good, good point. So Al Hakim, Queen Queen, gone on the other table, which means everyone's laddered up now. Good fold. Just about thirty-two hundred dollars. Thirty-two times your buy-in, my babies. Damahamaha, Ace King. Joe, a technical question has been asked by Tech, 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 Tech. The percentage doesn't calculate folded cards in, or? It does not. There you go. Kuklis, Ace, Queen, under the gun. Are we going to see it ship? There you go. We are indeed. Our man Tyrone still in asks Olua Moose, and the answer to that is nah. Tyrone out in 34th. Ace Jack for Mr. Rao. Felix asked, guys, what was the buy-in for the tourney? So the buy-in is an amount of money it costs to enter. It's sort of like an entry fee, and then that money is used to make up the prize pool. So that's what the buy-in was. Thank you for your question. Patently true. Neto Diaz with ace-queen now. And Machine does like to splash around. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a flat here. Maybe even one of his patented small three bets. And a little bit on the bigger size. Nito Diaz isn't going to be thrilled sitting with Ace Queen on just 24-ish bigs. But I think against the chip leader, you got to put the rest of the chips in and hope that as a bluff does it. Pulls the trigger with just 25 left playing for $100,000. That's the winner. Call Mentality. it off here. Make him look like a jerk. You're not that far behind. Come on. Three hearts, you're golden. Four hearts, you're boned. Unless you have a straight flush. Good call. Good point. All and right. You're still right, golden. Fine. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Uh, well, actually. Well... <laughs> well, actually. I had sunglasses here for that bit. Ace Good six place. for scrouts. Is that the hijack or the cutoff? I can never remember. That's that's the that that's the hijack. The cutoff. That's the cutoff, man. Well, I thought it was the hijack because you could hijack the button if you raised first. That that uh, that makes sense. And Kuklis is making a huge error in judgment by just calling here with the threes. If you have ten <laughs> big lines of pocket threes, you should go all in in late position, hope to get a fold. Why are you calling? Why are you trying to flop a set? You're better than this, Kuklis. Got to address this comment from Gentle Killer, who says, so PS super users do exist. Those who see the tables like this with all the cards exposed live. Actually, you're wrong. Thank you for your comment. This is a hand replayer. 
Replayer. The information isn't even sent to this software isn't even until sent to this software until the hand is completed, and then it still takes thirty minutes for us to see it. But let's say everyone at the table tanked, right? If all nine players got together and took their entire time banks, it would just shut down if it caught up with the 30 minute delay. It wouldn't even do anything. Look at this, Kukla's getting it in now. Maybe get sevens to fold. I mean, it's probably gonna work. You're sitting there, Mr. Rao, you're not thrilled by the situation. Uh, <laughs> calls. No diamond, no ways. Oh, oh, buried. Oh my gosh, on HBO. <laughs> Season three coming. Barry Greenstein to blame for Kuklis and not the flat with threes pre-flop because we know the same thing would have happened. Kuklis finishes the tournament in 25th place for $3,197. I love the way the threes play that. They just got unlucky. Kuklis, more like K-E-K-W-less. Okay, all right. Chipless I would have gone with. That's why you're the professional comedian. You, you would look if you had made other life cho choices. Oh my goodness, it's Grenader Jake in chat. Finish your compliment, man. Twitch superstar. <laughs> Sorry, there's a bigger star in chat. <laughs> your old news, <laughs> Benjer. <laughs> your old news. Hey, Grenader, yeah. you recognize Shaguar here, huh? You think you're cool with your Destiny 2 stream? Well, this guy used to play uh, call Counter Strike. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> okay, Grandma, let's get to bed. Griffin uh, was such a, an original esports person that they didn't even have a mouse at the time. You had to use the keyboard to aim. Very difficult. <laughs> Look, you got a Keck W from Grenader Jake. See? My new friend. We just spent a week together in San Diego. We got another very optimistic limp here with eight deuce of hearts. But it was suited. They are suited. I, you know what? I can I can kind of understand. Just being like, yeah, lots of people check. You get a free flop. They do. -ish. But this jack is probably going to be good enough <laughs> to get rid of queen high. Hmm. Nice try. Whenever I hear nice try now, I, without fail, I just think of McGruber when he's going into the Kunth's party. <laughs> and the woman asks if she can take his, his, his uh, car stereo, and he's like, nice try. I... Did not care for McGruber the first time I saw it <laughs> yeah, in the theater. Of course, neither did I the first time I saw it. But I need to see it, it again. Oh, it just gets better every time. It's absolutely absurd. It's become and I am one of my favorite comedies. A huge Will Forte fan. What an improbable, imperfect, poorly timed decision from Dama High. Betting into trips. Big old pop for Neto Diaz. Up to 4.4 million now. Dama High officially short stacked dama low yamashita shoving queen jack from late position gets it through from I like what uh, the cutoff doing down mr rao pocket deuces Trey, you asking, playing all the way tonight or final table tomorrow. We play straight through on these Sunday Million streams. We're going to play 24 down to a winner. Ray Maniac with an easy defend here against the open for Mr. Rao. Ace, King, King. Mr. Rao, you going to fire a little C-bet here? Take this down? Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to have to as the aggressor here. I think this is a bit too loose of an open. I understand, you know, you have a pair. You want to win as many pots as possible. But without a blocker, with five people behind you, 
but does get it folded to the big blind. With this particular board, no diamond. Could get a fold from Rayman, it yep. does. See Wally asked, just binge watch the big game. Does Chris Rose still commentate poker ever? No, he's too busy making millions upon millions of dollars doing sports stuff. Who's this? Chris Rose was my first uh, co-host on, uh, well, I was his co-host on the big game. And uh, he, like, is a, uh, like a sports guy that does, like, the Super Bowl and the World Series of baseball, not poker. Um just a, a oh, yeah. massive name in the in the you know the sports broadcast industry. Yeah, he Battle has not bots. come back to the Battlebots guy. Battlebots, yes. <laughs> Very cool. But he's also like on the field after the Super Bowl, like interviewing the winner generally. So. Right, right. And Machine MN flops huge despite being ahead pre-flop. Maybe one of my favorite comments of the day from. Ira Clipper Hofferman. I didn't like Coming to America Part 2 the first time I saw it, and I still don't. <laughs> Ira Clipper Hoffer is a fairly funny person, and I think that they are using a second account of another fairly funny person, because I can see some comedic overlap. Overlap, some crossover. I'm talking about Q, of course. Like Q and Q and on the guy. Yeah, you know how you can like just tell someone's style of writing. Mm hmm. Ray Maniac on the button, Jack 10 suited, somehow gonna run into a dominating hand in the small. Yeah, and on 15 bigs, you probably just wanna shove this in, and Scrouts should be pretty willing to go for this here. Whoa, Scrouts makes the call. Domination. Rotation. Open ender for Ray, who gets nation. there on the river. That is a massive swing. Double up for Ray Maniac. Scrouts drops down into 13th place. Ray Maniac skyrockets into 9th place. Can you say skyrocket? Yeah. For 9th? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Ira Clip. Clipper Hofferman says, I have no such second account, which is exactly how Q would write it. Right? I'm picking up on it. I That's see exactly it. what I would have said. <laughs> King Jack limping into the small blind. 10-3. Nobody hits. Here's where 10-3 just, just puts out a little tickler, right? Just a little like, hey, I didn't hit, but you didn't either. Boop. Yeah. Let's just see if 180,000 wins me this pot. Pew. Let's check it back. And still no one picks up anything remotely equitable. Hmm. And the river is a king. That's going to be pretty definitive. Now bet Todd, fold. Yeah, probably going to want to put out a bet. But since we can see the cards, I would have recommended a check. You, you recommend a check or a fold here? I would have recommended a check from Todd Salons because I can see that they're... Oh, seeing the, ca the hold yeah, cards. Yeah. I got you. 30 minutes later. Machine MN has been taken over on the leaderboard, by the way, by Diego, who's now first in chips, and Zaberti. More like Diego. Diego growing that stack. How's how's our meat boy doing? How's Super Sam doing? Super Sam boy is seventh in chips. And something interesting about Super Sam boy is mm. Super Sam boy has a four next to his name or their name. Which side? Which end. means they're in this for four buy-ins. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. So, in the green, but barely. Wait. The green's the profit or red's the profit? 
in the black. What does in the black mean? In the black is good. Good. In so the red in, is bad. In the black. Super Sandboy's in the black. Fired a lot of shells into this thing, but in the profit. And you, sh you would think you would be with 20 people left in the Sunday Million. It is exciting, though, I got to say, Joe, to get this deep in the Sunday Million. It's like that thing, you know, you, you dream about, you know, you'll actually have a dream about being, you know, playing in the World Series, hitting a Grand Slam, being on the big stage. This is the, you know, closest thing I think you can, a lot of people can get to that feeling is being, every decision is worth more money than any it ever has before. When, as you're playing, when you're playing poker, and I think anyone that's been deep in the Sunday Million, whether it's you know as deep as the final table or even the final two, three hundred people, five hundred people, it it feels like that. It is freaking exhilarating. So yeah, well, um, with twenty left to go, this is deep. This is exhilarating, yeah. and we do have several hands here. Ace Big five point. just gets out of the way despite the min raise, probably for the best. Tempting, I would think, but. You know, you just make it really enticing for a big squeeze behind, a.k.a. Dama High with Pocket Jacks. Yeah, and this uh, limp here from Scrout's actually going to do its job, but a big flip nonetheless and hits the ace on the river. Dama High, for the flop. favorite, but gone. We did like a Dama High, Dama High, Dama uh, to here. I don't know. 20th place. $3,200. Yeah, I mean, if, if they hadn't have ruined the bit with, like, actual language and told us that it meant queen high, that, that would have been the perfect finish for our right. damn ace high joke. A lot of ace high situations that damn high found themselves in to unfortunately bust in 20th. And Machine MN with Queen 9 suited in late position. Feels good enough for a poke. There it is. Oh, yeah. And Salons doesn't even defend the Ace 7. I know you're supposed to. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate folding. Listen, it. when you have 12 big blinds, you can. You want to make sure that when you're entering pots, you're putting in all your chips a lot of the time, you know, a seven. I, yeah, there's an argument to peel, especially against a chip leader. Who's going to be raising a lot of worse hands, but might even be better served to just shove it. Um, you get a lot of folds like we would have probably from the queen nine suited for that, you know, 14, 13 big blinds, but who wants to shove ACE seven off with 19 people left in the Sunday million. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those rare situations where like any of the three options is fine. Yeah. Yeah. I argument think you can peel all, if you Argument want. for all three, yeah. Yeah. No argument here, though. Mr. Rao should just find a shove here for the eight or so big blinds of Yoshida, who I've, I've been pretty impressed with how they've played holding in here. Yamashita, 17, been very aggressive on some of the less, more passive blind-on-blind -blind pay from, from Mr. Rao in previous hands. We're on the bubble right now for the final two tables. When is the next pay jump? He asked himself and then said aloud, 17th. Ray Maniac and Machine. This feels like uh this feels like a flop. There it is. King High, one club. Yeah. Rayman with the big range advantage here, raising under the gun. Going to feel pretty comfortable just betting here, hoping to get a fold and does. Ray Maniac. Maniac. Mr. Rowe, sorry, I got distracted by the roulette conversation going on in chat. <laughs> you got hard to get involved now. King 10 versus King 10. Who's going to win this pre-flop chicken war? And I think it's going to be Machine. I really like taking this spot. 
I wonder if Machine is watching the stream how far back. Um, been able to see how Mr. Rao has been playing, but we've seen opens like those pocket deuces in early positions. So certainly a hand like King-10, you can try to push the action there. And Machine, like I said earlier, uh, definitely one of the favorites for me, the way that they've been playing in this tournament. Machine with Ace-5 on the button. Sourdough. Scrouts with a hand you can't even really defend with. You're out of no. position. You're against the chip yeah. leader at the table. And that is it. We're on a break. Now, James Hardigan made me promise to keep him away from the roulette tables. <laughs> so I'm going to bring him back in now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. We are at the poker tables tonight for the concluding action in this week's Sunday Million. Uh, 9,104 total entries. We started the day with 64. 19 remain spread out over three tables. Playing down to a winner tonight right now, Diego has the chip lead. More than 10.6 million, more than 100K up top tonight. Uh, we are on break, as Joe just referenced. You also referenced the roulette conversation. A bit of an amusing suggestion from Wildcard in the chat. Bet 36 on black, 36 on red, one on the zero and one on the double zero. Uh, first of all, I'm reminded of the fact that double zero is a thing in so-called American roulette. Because, of course, in Europe, James, you have the single James. zero. James, there is a triple zero now in American Roulette. You are kidding me. No. Many, many casinos have added a triple zero because their edge of getting all of the money eventually <laughs> wasn't enough, apparently. I was I was going to say, I, I find it bad enough that traditionally European Roulette only had the single zero, and then casinos cottoned onto the idea of offering, hey, we offer American Roulette, as if it was some major selling point. <laughs> No, oh my God, that is to give you the zero. Often American oh, the diet. You can beat this one, yeah. <laughs> we often American oh, healthcare. <laughs> uh, I just love the idea of the thirty-six on red, thirty-six on black. It's like just don't bother with that. Put your single chip on your zero and your single chip on the double zero, and watch as you lose money long term. Uh, but. That's the idea of the game, right? You just hope to kind of win big in the short term, knowing that in the long term, the casino is going to get all your money. Um, Griffin, as someone who also has English heritage, you know that we love to talk about the weather. Uh, how are things in Montreal? Because I'm not complaining. It's nice to have good weather in the UK finally. But 27 Celsius, very, very humid. And I am schwitzing like you wouldn't believe inside my booth of the PokerStars Arena this evening. Uh, do you have any ventilation, any gentle breezes where you are? So, yeah, I have, I have a fan going uh, just, just outside the room here that uh, hopefully hasn't been too too loud, but it's been pretty hot uh, the last few weeks. Some really humid days, but in general, you know, perfect golfing golfing weather. I think that, uh, you know, it's been great. Summer's, summer's on the way, so it's been quite nice. But we're getting a proper air conditioner, like a real central air thing, been the long waiting list thing waiting for this thing to come in here but really excited for that for sure <laughs> yeah i bought a couple of new air conditioning units for the summer of course nowadays they're all energy efficient which means they don't work as well as they used to <laughs> no. um joe uh, how are things in in california i assume it's always hot there it's 34 degrees right now at uh 12 30 wow. midday here so it's uh it's there's actually like uh, some my computer updated while I was gone, and now I have like the weather constantly on my task yeah, bar. Yeah, I do I can't as well. Figure, I can't figure out how to get rid of it. Um, but it says 34 degrees, and then it says warning because uh, it's supposed to get that hot. And um, without angering some of the dumber people in the world, I'll just say this is what we're in for now, right? Forever is just like insanely hot summers, droughts. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I fear for what the rest of the summer has in store because it's mid June, right? We're not supposed to be hitting these temperatures for like another month, another six weeks. So, uh, yay, yay. My electric bill is all I have to say. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like you have to heat the indoors in the winter, blast it with cold air in the summer. I mean, Griffin, forgive my ignorance. How hot do things get in Montreal? 
Yeah, around, uh, you know, as hot as maybe like 32 or something like that. But 27 is kind of the, the median these days around there, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, obviously after a long period of nothing but rain and cold temperatures, as I said, not complaining. And I may even, and this is this is kind of uh, so bizarre to Strip say. Strip down. I may Run actually, through the sprinkler. Nope. No, don't have a sprinkler. Not going to get naked on stream. As you know, Twitch's terms of service would not allow it. Uh, no, I was actually thinking I might actually leave London next week. I'm actually going to visit the Cornish coast hey. of the United Kingdom just for a few days. I have not left the M25 circle since March of last year. And I'm starting to go slightly mad now. And bear in yeah. mind, most of that time locked inside the M25 circle has been locked inside my house and locked inside this room, so I really, really, really With need to you see. people. <laughs> I'll be really happy for you if you get away for a few days, James. Yeah. You, you definitely have earned it. I, you know, I think you're more well-suited to lockdown than most people, but even you at this point have to be wanting to go outside. Yeah, I think it's the realization that uh, it's not so much going outside because I've been out plenty and I go running pretty much every day. It's just the change of scenery, right? And the fact yeah. that we pretty much worked through the entirety of last summer and haven't had a proper break. So looking forward to that. But don't worry, Joe's going to be here next Monday to bring you the Sunday Million. But right now, Joe is going on a short break. Griffin and I are going back to the tables. And here we go. Just 19 remaining here. Probably playing for more money than any of these players, or at least most of, have played for before. Very exciting if you're in there, but also very nerve-wracking as Ray Maniac opens things up with the Jack Tennis Bays into Mr. Rao's 6-8 offsuit big blind. So one more elimination, Griffin, and we'll be, we'll be down to the final two tables. Nice opportunity here for the Maniac to fire out a continuation bet and take it down, but elects to check back. Maybe not wanting to find themselves in a situation where they're getting check raised all in and having to fold a hand like Jack-10. Um, certainly within the realm of possibility when Mr. Rao has something like a king, maybe some queens on that flop. Now I would probably like to see a bet from Ray Maniac just so that you don't end up uh, at the river against a hand like Ace High. So I like this delayed continuation bet even though of course we see that ray maniac had they bet the flop would have taken it down either way yeah row 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 your boat gently down the stream and fold the turn i'm still reeling slightly from the revelation that there are now roulette wheels with a triple zero i mean why stop there when is the quadruple zero coming the quintuple zero i mean just keep going right <sighs> Soon they'll be right wonder, with yeah. 10 zeros on the table. I just wonder if there's someone out there that prefers, like like, like a European who says, no, I, I, oh, yeah, I don't want to go to that casino. They only have European roulette. Like someone who prefers American roulette. Seriously, like the, exists. the first time I saw it, like, as a kind of, like, big selling point, like, we have American roulette, I was just like, oh, come on. But... <laughs> This is the version they play in Vegas. That's the version I want to play. Yeah, that's what out. I mean. They're, they're, they must exist. Yeah, Mashida now in a great deal of trouble and going to be even in even more if they get an open shove spot here from the small blind. Mr. Rao could enter this enter this pot, enter this pot with Queen Nine off, um, but getting to that sub fifteen big blind territory, you're probably just going to want to fold a hand like this because it's. Not good enough to shove. I think it's not quite good enough to limp, but does elect to do it anyway. Yeah, Mashida now an opportunity to shove those four and a half bigs or just complete the king deuce or just fold. Tough, tough to know what to do when you're playing this short. And I can confirm, Griffin, that Yamashita, who's decided to fold in this spot, is the shortest stack of the 19 remaining players. Oh, 
Poor old Mr. Rowe. Going to lose two in a row. And now it's Scrout with Ace Queen opening to 352k. If your Yamashita is King 10 good enough a hand to make a stand with here, Griffin? The problem with King 10 is, I mean, you, you're running out of time, surely. And the problem is, is that you're never going to be finding yourself in really a dominating position. Scrouts is an opening King 9. Maybe something like Queen 10 and Jack 10 suited. So you might want to just take the, you know, three odd hands here and try to find something that's going to play a bit better against the sort of range, you know, find yourself with an ace rag or, you know, yeah. something like King Jack suited or something all in as the first aggressor, like right here, made that fold, now found ace 10. And because Yamashita 17 is so short, should expect to see a call from Scrouts here in the, in the big blind um, for the four to five big blinds. Yeah. The blinds of 80,000, 160,000. Going up in a minute's time to 100k, 200k. Scrouts has to call with any two in the big. Yeah, I might have a tough time calling with something like 10 deuce, actually. I think there are some folds Scrouts can make, but king eight, probably a bit too strong. And ace high holds. That's a double up for Yamashita. AJ says, have you got yourself a piping hot mug of Bovril, James? No, Robocup contains Earl Grey tea decaffeinated because it is just gone half past eight in the UK and I cannot drink anything with caffeine in it after about 5 p.m. Otherwise, I can't get to sleep. You're like my girlfriend. She is the same way. Oh, Yamashita. And you'll Getting notice we've just gone full-handed, Griffin. You'll notice we've got nine players as we see this race, ace-queen yeah. versus fives. And fives are holding. And that's another double up for Yamashita, up now to three and a half million. Wow, go, what a turnaround. Go, Yamashita. But yes, nine go players at the table. That means we're down to 18. That means we are down to the final two tables in this week's Sunday Million. It also means we are on a money ladder. 18th place pays nearly 3200 and it's $4,400 if you can make it to 17th. Mr. Rao here, just over 10 big blinds. You're facing a raise from the cutoff. And yeah, electing to shove. Going to run right into the bladed hand of ace, queen of clubs. Get some chop opportunities here. No. Nope. That's not going to do it. Mr. Ace Rao queen out in holds. 18th. Yeah, so Mr. Rao, as I like to call them, is the <laughs> last player to cash out for $3,197.90. Everyone is now locked up at least 4400 you see, see how huge a couple of hands can be when you're playing uh, relatively short, short stacked here. As Yamashita just just had like 670,000, two double ups and a shove through, up near 4 million. So now just in the thick of it as Zappa with the two aces. And Todd Salons is short, oh. and that is a committing re-raise, Griffin. This is going to be an all-in, and Todd in horrible shape. Yeah, not when you want to see when you're all in for 17 people left in the Sunday Million up against aces with ace nine of clubs. Gown. He that gown. Is another KO. Todd Salon's out in 17th place. Did get the ladder to $4,400. So we now have 16 players remaining. And someone will move across from the other table shortly so that we'll keep both tables balanced. Eight and eight. If you like fast and furious poker, you are in the right place. The Sunday Million at this stage, a lot on the line, and it does tend to move quickly. We do like it fast and furious, and unlike the movies, Griffin and I are in the same scene and are still on talking terms. <laughs> um, Hippie H asks, uh, milk or lemon, James? Neither. Just Earl Grey tea. No caffeine, no milk, no lemon. Monster draw for Zapulation and also the best hand there with Ace High. Wins it uncontested. 
So with 16 remaining, Griffin, Diego still has the chip lead just. Diego with 8.9 million. Miller Maxime, who I think is also at the other table. No, oh, Diego's moved across, but Miller Maxime at the other table has 8.75 million. Grokar on Twitch. I'm in Team Yamashita now. Ship it over to him. I love how the fans at home start standing different players. <laughs> Got to root for someone. And Diego, uh, though, is going to be tough to catch, not only with that chip lead, but that ace-queen suited. And yeah. Scrouts would have flopped the world here. Ah, should have, would have, could have. Ah, oh, would have got the lot from Diego. Yes, Scrouts, you loser. <laughs> and just really hoping here. that Zapolution is just going to take a stab at this on the river. Got a bet now, Diego. Not easy to make two pair. Whoa. So I know what many of you are thinking, right? I just spent the five minute break complaining about the heat and complaining about the fact that I am kind of drenched in sweat right now. So why am I drinking hot tea? Griffin, there's some nonsense I read years ago that you should have hot drinks on hot days, that this somehow helps the body's metabolism. I'm starting to think that this is BS, like a lot of the advice that you see on the internet. But I still yeah. do it. That sounds about right. That doesn't sound... I mean, it's, it just doesn't sound particularly pleasant to have, like, a hot coffee on it on your hot day, like... No. I just got these new uh, pods for my Nespresso machine. That they they just they just got these new like ice Legaro ones or whatever. Nespresso understands the assignment, you know. Starting to get hot, you just put like five or six ice cubes, and then you put it on. It just comes out perfect for the for little iced now, coffee. My understanding is that Nespresso is declining in popularity despite the endorsement of George Clooney, because people are getting a little bit concerned about all of the waste that they create and the oh, yeah? environmental impact of those pods. Wow, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, probably a lot of pods. I mean, uh, they give they, they, they give me like uh, these sort of green recyclable bags. You're supposed to put them in there and then put in the recycling, but I don't know. It is a lot of waste. Pretty significant pot here for Diego against... Pig A, ooh. Top pair gonna feel very good about Diego. Probably wants to find their way out of this pot now. It looks pretty strong what this pig is up to. And the question is, will that do pig? And we are switching. So at this table, we have your old friend Neto Diaz, Griffin. I know you've been on and off that train over the course of this event, but Neto is currently tourney boss. The Brazilian has 9.8 million right now. Wow. Uh, Neto's been playing great all tournament. I like giving him a hard time. I just, I hold him to a high standard, James, <laughs> or them. And Dobrum with the Queen Jack, definitely a hand better than, well better than average blind on blind. But for 17 big blinds, you're not going to want to call it off here playing at this. So much at stake. Just 16 left. Can you imagine?
Well, these blinds have hit a fairly decent level now, 100,000 to 200,000, putting pressure on a lot of the remaining players. Average stack right now, 5.6 million. The chip leader raising with ace jack. Juicy Might get J. a little resistance here from the big blind, but not the flop that Juicy J93 wants to see. Oh, flush draw. And an overbet on the turn. Juicy J certainly targeting. Ooh. Ooh. Suits you, sir. And then checks. Okay, so Juicy J and Neto Diaz tied for the chip lead at this yeah. table. Meanwhile, over at the other table, remember, we're down to the last two tables. Diego has around 9 million. Maxim defending with Jack-7, and it's domination, not domination rotation, of course. It is a queen-high flop. But the strawberries, Griffin, the strawberries, no one has a heart. Yeah, I don't think they'll go too crazy on this particular texture here, but certainly check call one bet for Miller. Going to expect your seven to be good a decent amount of the time. But especially with a turn like that, probably not going to want to continue that often as the big blind. Be interesting to see Cow whether to bet again does. I've but just realized that Miller's avatar griffin off. is what looks like a child's drawing of a windmill, and I like it. Oh my gosh, bet the heart. Pardon me. Wow. This lead of. Whew. Man, if this was part of the plan, I mean, this might work. This looks like the Jack of Hearts, the Ten of Hearts, and does Miller Maxim jumps into the chip lead near 10 million chips. Wow. Meanwhile, the real Pazman, not to be confused with the fake one, has aces in the big blind. Miller Maxim, ace 10 suited in the small blind. This yeah, could... Yeah, we'll go all in. <laughs> be a double up for real it's, Paz man. Yeah, this limp effectively serving as a trap for Miller Maxman. Maxim, pardon me, just 11 big blinds. And how quickly the fortunes can change. 10 high flop. You know. 10 on the oh, turn. Why? Aces cracked. Miller Maxim trips oh, on the turn. The humanity. Real Pazman is out in 16th place, cashing for $4,400. And Miller Maxim jumps up to the number one spot on the leaderboard. The player from Russia is now chip leader with just over 12 mil. Whew. That's tough. That guy's, uh, that guy's hot right now. He's feeling, I don't know where he lives, but he's just it's no fun. Russia. Yeah, that's a great game. Russia. He's in Russia. They are in Russia, I should say. Zebra die with aces under the gun here. And how quickly the action will just start back up. We see a queen 10 suited fold from Miller Maxim, but then a call from Nito Diaz with much less chips. The Jack 10 suited and a very action y flop here. Uh, Griffin, just so you know, I'm trying to keep an eye on what's happening at the other table. What I find fascinating, we came back from break and Yamashita was the shortest stack of the remaining players, right? Yamashita yep. had like three, four big blinds at one point. Correct. Yamashita just got another double up. Yamashita is now second in chips with 9.2 million. That's why we play, baby. You never know. And the, the person on Twitch 
They'd be very happy to hear that standing Yamashita earlier. And this pot getting real big. Zibberdai going to think that Neto Diaz has a lot of King X's in their range here. You think about the button flatting range against the end of the gun open. Now with a bet like that and Neto Diaz's particular hand should probably expect Neto to get out of there. But a nice amount of chips to gain there for Zibber. Zibbe! Oh, Hippie H points out if he's hot, he should drink hot tea. Do you know what? I, look, I'm doing the experiment <laughs> right now, guys. I This is science in action. I'm trying the whole hot tea on a hot day thing. It's not working. I, so this is... You, I mean, no, but you've, you've surely done this before. I have, and I still... The thing is, I just I just like having tea in the in Yeah, the evening, you do, yeah. But, but I, I don't buy this whole metabolism crap, to be perfectly honest with you. fair fight here going to the flop if we are to assume Juicy J will peel one off here with the deuces. Just one chip. So Super Sandboy, two over cards, gut shot straight draw. Still near enough a flip at this stage. Not any more. The set of deuces on the turn for Juicy J. Can't really blame Super Sandboy for not snap betting this flop. You know, if it was something like Jack 10 6 or Jack 10 4, you're happy to sort of bet. Um, you know, you want to tell that story that you have an overpair, but Jack 10 7 in particular, Jack 10 8, Jack 10 9, those kind of hands, boards, pardon me, are tough to make that continuation bet with ace king because you're expecting your opponent to be on base in some way you don't want to get check raised with all that equity drawn to the nuts so i don't blame super sandboy i think in that particular instance a bet would have taken it down on the flop and then juicy wouldn't have been able to see that deuce on the turn making a set um, but i think super sandboy is okay playing it that way as the blinds go up the price of poker going up Yes, it is 125,000, 250,000, as we established earlier. 15-minute blind levels in the Sunday Million, all the way through to its conclusion tonight. We will play down to a winner today. Whoa. All coming up juicy. The old Doyle Brunson, 10 deuce. It is a fact that if you play 10 deuce, you will win the World Series of Poker main event. That has been proved on at least two occasions by Doyle Brunson. He didn't win the tournament on both, with both hands, did he? I believe he did. Back-to-back -back years. What? Yeah. That's crazy. That's a walk for Miller, Maxim. Oh, this could be disaster for Super Samboy. Pocket nine's on the button, but in the cutoff is Juicy J with jacks. Yeah, haven't really seen Super Samboy play any hand improperly throughout the course uh, of this day. But right here, you're just running into it. You have pocket nines. You have about 16 big blinds. You're yeah. facing a cutoff open. You are thrilled to go all in. Take all... those three chips. Be you're... in a flip, whatever. You're thrilled until you see that it's JJ for JJ. And yeah. it is a domination situation. And Super Sandboy is going to need to get lucky here. He's got Juicy and he's got Jay. He's got James. He's got Joe. And Jack's hold Sandboy and we lose Super Sandboy. And that is going to take us down to the final 14 two tables of seven now and we have switched over to the other table and diego with an opportunity here it's right on the line you know you're sitting there with ace queen it's a no-brainer ace jack you're probably going with it ace 10 for about 16 bigs on a cutoff shove 
The problem with calling off there is that if you're wrong or if you lose, you do not have the kind of chips to acquire. And I think that even though we saw that Diego was ahead with the ace 10, I think that that is a correct fold because you really don't want to lose that pot. And you don't know your opponent has queen 10 suited or whatever it was. So I think that's okay from Diego. You're going to make more chips in hands like this. Just min raise, get some folds. So I think that's a very disciplined point fold by F8, 33. And 14 remaining now, Griffin. And that means we are on another payout ladder. 14th place, 4,400. And 13th through to 10th will get $6,072. So not an insignificant jump. And one which all the remaining players will be conscious of. Rosera1234 uh, says on Twitch, hate to say it, but I would have folded those jacks to an all-in. My friend, you're playing too tight. You got it, man. I mean, Get out it, there. Start making those big calls. Because when someone shoves on you for 16 big blinds in late position, you yeah. jacks. You got to call. Well, that is another elimination. Yamashita has just eliminated Piga Ooh. <laughs> and we are down to 13. And everyone has now locked up more than six grand. And can we just say, James, Yamashita 17 with 13 million um, now facing an all-in. Good, good discipline. Yeah. Go for those nine bigs. Good spot, Griffin. 13 million chips for Yamashita. Still number two on the leaderboard. Juicy J93 over at the other table. Chip leader right now with 13.8 million. Uh, Juicy J rep in Canada, by the way. The most prolific flag in the final 13. Not going to surprise many of you. Brazil. There are one, <laughs> two, three, four Vamos. Brazilian players remaining. And we could be flipping here. Yamashita is open with King Queen. Machine MN yeah. all in with fours. Ray Maniac with Ace King. Yeah, don't mind the shove here from Machine. Yeah, Machine is going to be opening a wide range, this shorthanded, six-handed here. Going to have a lot of raise folds, like a king-queen. Can't really call those 17 bigs. But Ray Maniac with the ace-king behind. Machine's got to hate life right now, but when they see the cards, it is an absolutely huge flip. Um, and it's going to be... It's going to be drama here. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is worth tens of thousands of dollars. This flip. Here we go. Eight, eight, seven. Oh, the counterfeit. Counterfeited, and that will take us down to the final 12 as Machine NM cashes out in 13th place. And Griffin's cat final makes a cameo appearance cat. in the stream. Yeah, I left the door open, and she came in here meowing, and she just wanted to say hi to everyone out there. Hello. Hello. Okay, you want to go, baby? There you go. Best bit so far. <laughs> it's the final 12 cat. <laughs> well, that is a double up for KO. Yeah, I'm trying to remember when Kiki made her debut on Stream Griffin. Would it have been during Stadium Series last summer? Yeah, you know, she she just, I think she just had her first birthday maybe a month or two ago. Wow. So sounds about right, yeah. She has certainly grown. Yeah, yeah. I might and she successfully logged later. into Twitch recently. Fives versus Ace Queen. <laughs> Another big flip, and look at how much these are worth. All the chips and cow is gown. Nope. Out in 12th place, taking us down to 11. Miller Maxim. Up to Might 15 10, and a half James. million. Might be 10. Sorry to cut you off. King's ace, king. Juicy J. Oh. oh, wow. And, you know, before you came back, James, when you were on your break, Joe and I had a, a, about 30 minutes at least. No cards, nothing going on. And we talked yeah. a little bit about the variance of that, how it can really just come in bunches, the big hands or the not so big hands. And right now we are getting a run of crazy cards and all ends when it matters most no queen Holding no barry greenstein that scrout's wow. gone in 11th and we are hand for hand ladies and gentlemen 10 
players remaining. There will be two tables of five very shortly. We'll balance someone from the other table. And that means one more elimination, and then we will be at nine. We will be at the official final table of this week's Sunday Million. So let's switch over switch to the other table. So Juicy J reclaimed the chip lead on that last hand. So Juicy J back out in front with 18.6 million. Miller Maxim second on the leaderboard. Uh, Zappa, who's at this table, one-time chip leader, is now the shortest stack of the final 10 with 3.3 million. And we are at the 125, 250k blind level. But no one in that super danger zone really at this stage. Uh, having over 10 big blinds usually... You know, 10 people left in, in a tournament in a tournament like the Sunday Million. You expect to see some, you know, five to eight big blind stacks. So still some maneuverability, a double up here, double up there. Suddenly you're in the top three, and that's just the way it goes. Yamashita. Deciding how to respond to this re-raise. Decides to fold over at the other table. Kings again for Juicy J. And Neto has flopped a gut shot. And electing to play it aggressively. And Juicy J probably doesn't love that turn card, considering it is a spade. It completes all of the spade draws that Neto could have. But because Neto's now turned a pair, we'll probably take the free oh. card and rivers the straight. Wowza. I mean, from Juicy J's perspective, it's not the best board in the world, is it? Straighty, flushy. No, and it does lend itself to the argument that maybe you should have just put more money in on the flop. But I mean, keep a worse hand in there. Worst case scenario, you're going to pay off 1.75 million. It could have been worse if you're going to see Kings yeah, cracked. But I don't think you should. I mean, you're not really beating anything. It would have to be a pure bluff from Nito, which he wouldn't really necessarily have many on this flop. It's going to be a lot of hands like Jack seven, Jack eight, what have you. Dobrom. King 10 of strawberries makes it 500k. And Miller Maxim calls and flops a gut shot. Dobrum with King High has the best hand, has a blocker to Miller Maxim straight draw. James, do you mind if I do something very unprofessional and feed my cat really quickly? Because she's meowing at me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Griffin Benja will be right back. I'll be right back. <sighs> okay, King High still ahead. Griffin should have taken his camera with him. I think we would have liked to have seen Kiki being fed on stream. Okay, double paired board. King kicker is good. And the question here is whether Miller Maxim decides to bluff at this river with Jack High. And if so, and this is the even more exciting question, is whether Dobrum can find a hero call with King High. Looks like Mr. Benja has returned from his cat feeding uh, exercise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She has quieted her revolt. 
<laughs> I love people appreciating the uh, the picture of me. Dr. Wakes the hero call. Wow. Oh, was it a big one? Dobrum calling there with King High. And Dobrum up to 5.6 million. More than anything, Griffin, you're getting respect for taking care of your cat. Go look after your pets. If you're going to have that responsibility, <laughs> if you're going to have an animal in the house, you've got to right. take care of it. Over to the other table. Switching. And it's top pair here for Ray Maniac. Yeah, that is a good point from Raksha. You do need to feed them or they will eat you. That is kind of how I feel about cats. <laughs> and that's why they're awesome. Although if my cat did eat me live on the stream, it would go viral. Yamashita, 12 milli. Switching. Switching. Dobrum has paired their six. Zabirdi with fives. Dobrum still with the best hand. Hard to know it, though, on that board. Yeah, pretty nothing burger of a hand here between Dobrum and Zipper Die. And blinds are up. 150,000, 300,000. Average stack 9.1 million. So that's a 30 big blind average. So we are kind of at where we would expect to be. We had that flurry of eliminations. I get the impression, Griffin, that we could be in for, okay, we might get to the final table in the next level or so, but I don't think it's going to be kind of like lightning fast now. I think we've got one of those kind of like periods of, Slow action for a while. Not to say yeah. we won't see significant hands or significant pots, but... I mean, listen, James, you cover as much poker as you do, you start to see patterns. Absolutely. Develop. And uh, this seems like it a uh, bit of a drought. Maybe maybe here we saw, the, f like, as we said, the Fast and Furious action a little while ago, and now it looks like it's cooling down a bit. Yeah, yeah. You go from the Fast and the Furious, which is just all action at a frenetic pace... And then you go to, like, a Tarantino movie that's just not been edited properly. There's some good <laughs> stuff in there, but then there's just so much kind of filler and padding and unnecessary dialogue and just lingering. And you just think, you pair an hour out of this four-hour movie and actually it's watchable. This will be a pretty interesting spot for Ray Maniac, Buster Chair. Almost certainly going to be going all in here for the 10 big blinds. Now you're sitting there in Ray Maniac's shoes. Uh, the big blind has even less than that. So it's effectively a blind on blind shove. This is probably the line of hand you want to be going for. But again, we talk about your leverage, something like 40 big ones at this stage. Do you really want to double up Buster Chair just because you're, you know, slightly ahead of the range? So not an easy decision here for Buster Chair and, and not one that I think a lot of people would want to be in. But 40 big blinds, you're feeling pretty pretty good otherwise. Now, this one, you can't let go if Buster Chair decides to shove the 12 big blinds, which almost certainly you should. And lets it go. Wow, dodging bullets. So a question here from Baj Saro. Does Zappa have the Kinder Chocolate Kid? in his avatar. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that child. The only thing I associate with Kinder is that frightening egg 
that was on the TV commercials in the 1980s, which I think gave children nightmares. This kind of Humpty Dumpty-esque character. Again, Griffin has no idea what I'm talking about, but there <laughs> will be at least one person watching. There has to be at least one of you who knows what I'm referring to. If you don't, check on YouTube. Search the Kinder advert with the big egg thing on the wall from the 1980s. It's like a horror movie. Big flop here uh, for Ray Maniac. Just getting tens, raising it up, getting a complete 10 8 3 rainbow, firing a bet, getting a call. Really living the dream here, Ray Maniac is. Now, the question is if you are targeting hands like 8x, how much do you want to bet on the turn? That is probably going to be too stiff for Diego to continue. Maybe with a straight draw, Diego would, would want to see a river something like 8 9, certainly something like 8. 8x of hearts, but ace 8, I think you might just want to fight another day. Chuck what was some of Doobie. The Double Chuck Doobie. Pop Scrabble. <laughs> uh, what were some of the maybe adverts or like movie scenes that really scared you as a kid? Like really got in there deep. You like remember it really freaking you out? That's a really good question. Um, I think as a I, look, I didn't really. I've never been a huge fan of horror, even as a teenager and even as an adult. But there are scenes in movies which I remember being haunted by as a kid. And interestingly, you know, in Jaws, the original Jaws, there's the scene of like the the head when it pops out of the boat, and that's like the big scare that Spielberg added into the movie in post production. That mm -hmm. one didn't get me. The scene that got me, and I had nightmares about for a while, was in the sequel in Jaws two. And bear in mind, as a child, I didn't quite have the critical acumen I have now, so I thought Jaws yeah. 2 was actually a decent film. But there's the scene where Roy Scheider wades out into sea because he sees a bit of floating debris, and he turns it over, and this kind of charred body kind of falls on top of him. Okay. And that absolutely scared the bejesus oh. out of me. <laughs> um, but here Jaws is... Jaws 2, what a dark horse. <laughs> here, is, here is a hashtag fun fact, then. Maybe not so fun for my mother. Again not someone who would ever normally watch a horror movie. But when my dad was away on business and I was asleep one night as a kid, Carrie was on TV and she watched Carrie. And she was so freaked out by the final scare, the hand coming out of the grave shot, that she jumped out of her chair, stood on a glass, um, cut her foot, and had to drag me to the accident emergency department in the middle of the night to get oh medical attention gosh. for her cut foot. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's brutal. <laughs> that was that was good, though. Thank you uh, for sharing that. For me, it would be uh, the scene from Witches. That's a huge standout for, for me as a kid when they when the witches turn all the all the kids into like rats or whatever that's yeah. that was just wild i haven't i feel like i haven't rewatched that movie since i was a kid because of how terrified i was what's amazing here griffin is that so dying. many people are now returning to the stream having sought out that kinder commercial from the 1980s <laughs> and i'm so pleased that you have now shared in the experience i'm so sorry that none of you will sleep tonight i'm so sorry that that thing is going to haunt you in your nightmares for the next month but at least you now know that i wasn't exaggerating <laughs> switching switching See, Squidgy referencing Exorcist, and The Exorcist is a film that I didn't see until I was an adult because it was really hard to get hold of in the UK. Um, during the 1980s and 1990s, it was not available on home video. The British Board of Film Classification refused to give it an 18 certificate because they were worried about kids being able to see it. And understandably, Warner Brothers did not want to make cuts to an Oscar-nominated movie. And it wasn't until 1999 that it became available in the UK. Switching. Um, I didn't see it until I went to visit my family in America in, the, in 1994. And I insisted that they rent The Exorcist on video because I really <laughs> wanted to see it. Yeah. I don't remember what the movie was, but I remember the first time that I, I went, I snuck into a movie when I was a kid, and then the the person came by with the flashlight, and all three of us were there, probably not a day over 13. 
<laughs> I think it might have been. I think the reason why I'm triggered by thinking it is because someone mentioned Child's Play. I think it was Child's Play. And uh, and I remember telling my I just wanted my parents to name name my little brother Chucky so bad. Finally, they, they settled on Charlie, so I could still call him Chucky. <laughs> oh, I bet you love that. <laughs> Switching. Big pot there, 5.3 million. Absolutely, Dobram on fire right now, and Dobram currently in the top five. Chip leader is still Juicy J with more than 20 million. I believe Juicy J is the first player to cross the 20 million mark. And some nice play from Yamashita, 17 on that table. Finding a spot there to actually get Diego to make the mistake of limp folding the pocket threes. Such a good hand as we've seen in a lot of our streams, James. Uh, you know, the kind of hand you want to limp shove, sub 30 big blind stack. But for playing for this amount of money, you never just want to run into it and be out. So yeah. uh, a bit of a tight fold from Diego there. And actually got exploited by something like nine deuce, ten deuce off. So Bust a chair all Here. in. This might be a bit too strong. It does make the call with Queen Jack. Pretty and fair fight pre -flop, high holds. Wow. That is going to be a double up for Buster Chair. So just to clarify where we are, guys, you can see the number on the screen. Ten players remain from a total of 9,104 entries. That means we've got two tables of five. It does mean we are on the final table bubble. Next player out will cash out for $6,072. Then we'll be at the final nine. Then we'll be at the final table. And then we'll continue playing down to a winner in tonight's Sunday Million. Yeah, and you know, the thing that can be so brutal too, James, um, about being the short stack when you're just playing sort of five, six-handed is how quickly your chip stack can go down if you don't find spots to shove. We talked about how uh, Zapulation or whatever their name is on the other table had that 3.3 million at, you know, 300K, now yeah. down to 1.8 million just from being blind out, and that's six big blinds. And the blinds are probably going up pretty soon too, so in big trouble over there and a huge favorite to be our 10th place finisher here. And this Pretty is one interesting of the longer here. periods yeah. of hand for hand play that we've seen in a while. Oh. And, and how do you not pay this off? You have to, right? Yeah. With, with no action to the river, you kind of have to. You would have expected a straight to have been heard from on previous streets. Three of a kind, bit too strong. Dobrum pays it off and down to seven and a half million. Good shove spot here for Zibridi. You just got to pull the trigger. I know it's for so much money and you got to get through four people, but you only have 10 big blinds. You got to shove the king queen here. Pull the trigger. Doesn't have it in them. And it's spots like that where you could be acquiring chips. And when you don't, you're just going to blind out of the Sunday Million. And you can see the way that Juicy J is capitalizing on all this passive play. People willing to fold King Queen off. You can't do it. Queen Six is being popped up. We can see now Juicy J did get out flopped. But in general, look at how many chips uh, Juicy has been able to acquire. Over 20 million. Just so much more than everyone else. Yeah, and we did have a situation, Griffin, where for a while it was a bit of a contest for the chip lead. Everyone was a, around the kind of eight or nine million mark, but quite some distance now between first and second. Okay, that last hand sees Juicy J drop below the 20 million mark, but still 19.7. Miller Maxim is the second biggest stack and has 12.7, as we can see here. Mm. And this should be that coveted all in here. With just 10 big blinds. Zipper D. I mean, there's an outside chance Zipper D folds if they're not willing to shove the king queen. You know, you got to call with pocket fives here, but folds. You know, Going to have a tough time winning this tournament at this rate. But if you talk about the ladder, I mean, ninth place, 8,300. Seventh place, 15,889. Yeah, yeah. A couple more. Fourth place, 41,575. A lot of these people, you know, that are playing this tournament, not just a 109 buy in, but some of them satellite it in. Some of them are in for $10, $5, you know, so don't want to just call off with pocket fives. 
And we've been talking all this way from the start of play about payout brackets. Now we get to the point where every single elimination sees a jump in the prize money. As you just referenced, Griffin, you make an additional $2,300 by laddering from 10th to 9th. And then we see the really big jumps in the payouts. And of course, a six-figure score up top tonight, more than $108,000 for the winner of this week's Sunday Million. Yeah, and I think it's important to put yourself in the shoes of someone when you're watching something like this that's playing for, you know, that, that pay jump of 2300 is is more than they're used to, you know, buying in for in a month. Um, and Zipper D, you know, may have $3 million. That isn't a lot of chips on this table. But when we were on the other one, Zap had 1.8. So a lot yeah. to consider. Ace Jack, I think, going to be too strong, has to go for it. And Neto Diaz folding the King-Queen suited pretty quickly because... It represents half of their stack, and Zipper D has been pretty tight. Yeah, appreciate we haven't been on the other table for a while. We'll check in there again soon, but I can tell you that Zappa is still the shortest stack of the remaining 10 players with 2.29 million. So has gained some back. Probably got a shove through, which is nice to do with six big blinds. It means no one had anything. And we can see Juicy J really doing what we often see the eventual winner of the Sunday Million do. Get a lot of chips and put, keep just pounding. Pressure, 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 pressure. And you, especially at this particular stage, at the final table bubble when you're playing shorthanded, you can acquire so many chips. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if Juicy J is flirting with that 23, 24 million mark before we even get to the final nine. Yeah, Juicy J back up over 20 million, close to 22 million right now. Getting close to having a two to one chip lead over Ray Maniac, who sits in second place on the leaderboard. And worth highlighting that we still have four Brazilian players in the final wow. 10 of tonight's Vamo! Sunday million. And we are at a new blind level, 175,350,000. And Neto electing to just shove it in here, just under 20 big blinds. I think this is okay. You know, you don't want to be in a situation where you're sort of min folding. Switching. Switching. Buster Chair with Kings, Cheeky Ray Maniac chair. with 5-3, and pairs their three on the flop. And this is what you want when you decide to limp. It's a pretty high-risk strategy uh, within the context of, you know, playing a scared game, but clearly Buster Chair, not particularly scared of busting, wants to have their opponent either shove or flop some equity as they have here. Now, on this turn card, decides to check with just an SPR of about 2.5. Um, maybe with the intention of check shoving. But you are losing value from hands like 5-3 that will check back, but also probably call a bet. And another check. I don't love this. I would have liked to have seen a bet from Buster to get some value. Not today. So Diego, one-time chip leader, opening here to 735,000. And Diego is playing from Argentina this evening. Artisian Sourdough, a couple of different options here. Fold might be a popular one, though, and that is what Raymaniac goes with. Switching. Switching. And nice way to acquire some chips there with the ace-10 shove as Dobrim now with the kings. Unfortunately for them, not much resistance in the form of four real bad hands. It is not Miller time. So Dobrum playing around average, the average stack being 9.1 million. Zaberdi is the shorty at this table with 3.3 million. Zappa the shorty at the other table with 2.1 million. Next player out, 
Cashes for 6K and takes us down to the final nine. The single table, the final table. Interesting choice here for Miller Maxim. Electing to go with a size of just over 4X with the A7. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on Dobrum to play honestly, which is a situation there with the A7. Instead of just getting tricky and limping and calling a raise or, you know, you don't want to limp shove. So I, I like it. Miller Maxim putting on the pressure. That's what you want to do at this stage. As we see, Juicy has been doing so effectively. What's Miller thinking about doing here with 8-6 suited? Yeah, maybe just trying to find some spots where they can, you know, where they probably would have otherwise open, see if they can get some chips off of Juicy J. But it's so tough to do. Once you reopen the betting there, you're going to have to put in near 2 million chips and you never know how Juicy J is going to react. Sailboats for Dobrum. The fours still good on the turn. Yeah, and you'd love to see a check back there with pocket fours, knowing that you can't really face any resistance, any betting on this king seven eight board. But once it's checked, the odds of you having the best hand do go up quite significantly. And Juicy J gets there on the river. No Barry Greenstein, but the five is enough. And if this gets checked to showdown, that will be another pot sent in Juicy J's direction. Sure enough, and that will take us to the break. And we still have 10 players remaining. We are on the final table bubble. And right now, Juicy J93 from Canada has the chip lead, 22 million, 10 million more than the player who's second on the leaderboard as we continue to play down to a winner in this week's Sunday Million with more than $108,000 up top. A short break and then back to hand-for-hand -hand action. Well, let's welcome Joe Stapleton back into the mix. And Joe, I just realized we did actually miss a trick or rather didn't follow through on one of our promises from last week's podcast. We were talking about video games at the start of the show. We said we were going to discuss video games with our guest, Kim Caramelli, and we never got around to it. We had so much more to talk to Kim about. I know she is a big video games fan, but hey, we've got Griffin with us now, so we can talk about video games with Griffin. And just to be clear, Griffin, this helps Joe. He needs to do this for tax purposes. Correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, video games. Well, you know, it's funny. I I've really gotten into... Um, deeper into video games sort of the last few years as far as console games and uh, you know watching E3 every year was kind of like this this big thing that I would do for the week I was make sure I wouldn't go anywhere but I've been I don't know I've, I've been a bit weird about games the last six or six months or so I haven't really been reading my my game informer I haven't been playing much but I will say um, I think it was maybe cyberpunk that did me and I was so excited about that game and then the fact that it was a bit disappointed we talked a bunch about it sometimes even on the stream James um, but I, I will say that I finally did buy a new game just the other day, which was uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Um, oh, is it is the new Ratchet and Clank out? It just came out a couple days ago. It's got knockout reviews. It's like a nine on Metacritic. And I saw a bunch of uh, the developers talking about how they didn't crunch for it at all and that they had, you know, no more than 40 hour weeks and stuff. And I, I was I really, you know, that's been a big problem in the gaming industry, game dev industry for a while. So. In, in the, I was probably intended on buying it after a few months or if I found some time or if I found motivated. But as soon as I read that, I was like, I'm going to support good practices. So I bought it and I'm excited to play it uh, sometime this week. I'm glad you highlighted good practices. And Joe, I know this is one of your bugbears. It's, it's not for me. I mean, obviously, it's bad the way that a lot of these devs, a lot of the people working on these games are under intense pressure to hit a deadline and their working hours are absurd. But I think the bigger issue as Joe alludes to all the time, is the fact that it's now acceptable to put out an incomplete product. I'd like to think, and you mentioned Cyberpunk, Griffin, that that might have changed things now. I think there comes a point where it's like there's only so much people are willing to accept, right? That if you're paying, you know, $50, $60 for a game, you understand that there might be bug fixes, you understand there might be updates, yeah. but you can't be going to market your retail product cannot be so far behind what is acceptable to a consumer paying that kind of price. Do you think, Joe, it will change after what happened with Cyberpunk? I honestly don't think it will. Like, I think that our entire society is based on 
consumers just doing whatever big companies want them to do and not enough people um, boycott things or spend their dollars wisely enough to make it not worthwhile for companies to do these things. So um, if a few companies can take that to heart, like the, the folks who made Ratchet and Clank and we can support those games, uh, I just don't see any one game being the end of that. Like, it's just, you know, like I yeah. say all the time, like, you never go buy a new car and then you, you get it home and you're like, how do you roll the windows down? They're like, oh, no, no, that's going to come in an update later. Like, we don't accept that in any other product, but yet somehow we still put like 50, 60, sometimes more, right? Like, oh, if yeah. you bought, I think there were different versions of Cyberpunk. You could have spent up to $100 on that game. Uh, and that's before anything else in game that they try to get you to spend on now. So I don't think it's going to change right away, uh, but maybe over time it will. I just don't see it happening right the second. Yeah, I mean, financially, the game was still such a success at the end of the day. All the bad yeah. press. I mean, Cyberpunk still everyone everyone bought it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. Well, I mean, we talked about this the other day, Griffin, that, you know, Witcher 3, people talk about that as one of the greatest video games of all time. But I think that was a game that took a good 12 months to yeah. get to a point where they'd ironed out all the bugs and it was playable. Now, people don't look back on the period where they were fixing it. They just look back on the last four or five years where it's been an absolutely awesome role player. Yeah, I, th I think that's another thing, too, is that there's this uh, this idea with the game devs where they're like, OK, well, we just we figure it out on the fly like we did the last time when we had this amazing game that we just like pulled it off and then they they can't do it the next time because it's just yeah. it's just not. Uh, it's not I game think game. that we're, we're at a stage like we were with the entertainment industry, like in the, you know, in the 1920s, 1930s, where people were just being abused and overworked. And eventually, you know, because people were so desperate to work in the industry. Uh, and I think that eventually we'll see like unionization and stuff like that take over where, where companies won't really be able to do this. Yeah. Well, you can see, guys, action has restarted. We are down to the final two tables in this week's Sunday Million. Griffin is going to take a short break as Joe and I continue to bring you hand for hand action on the final table bubble. And this has been a meaty bubble, Joe. Has it been a while? I, I tuned in for like the last few minutes before the break. I was surprised yeah. we didn't see the bubble burst, but it was only, you know, I only I only checked in maybe five minutes before the break. It's been a f two or three levels, to be honest. And we did have one of those kind of periods of carnage where we got down from like 16 to 10 in like a five minute period. So no real shock that it slowed down. But now you kind of feel that now we're getting we're already at the, you know, 175, 350 level. If we get to 200, 400, yeah, there's going to be more carnage. You know how, like, when you're on Zoom and uh, somebody will slow down for a second and then the whole thing will speed up to catch up, you'll sort of yeah, see it yeah. fly through? That's a poker tournament. Oh, uh, Poker tournaments, like glitchy Zoom calls. Exactly. I mean, there are plenty of hands being dealt here. Ace, queen, ace, queen, deuces. And I guess if Zappa moves all in here, Diego can get away from the deuces. And Yamashita can call. And this is going to be a chop pot. And Joe, you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, a chop pot. pot. Especially during H4H. Switching. Switching. And I tell you what, there have been a fair few confrontations at this table between Miller Maxim with that gloriously kitty painted windmill and <laughs> Dobron. And this is Diamonds v. Diamonds, Jack-9 versus Ace-10. Do you think that's one of those windmills that gives you cancer? What? I just thought the last U.S. president said that windmills give you cancer, so I thought maybe this is one of them. He's still talking about that guy. I just want to make sure it's a safe windmill. Yes, Joe, it's a safe windmill. Well, 
pair of jacks are going to hold her. Always the two gigantic stacks. Who would love to see out there in chat? Who would love to see an all-in confrontation between Miller Maxim and Dobrum? Oh, well, we do have Ace King versus Fives. Now, ICM is a thing. Zaberdi has 2.2 million. Zappa has 1.8 million. But what does Neto want to do with Fives? Shoves. Whoa. Is going to risk it and is going to be flipping because Dobrum's going to call with Ace King. Risk it for the biscuit. King high flop. And that is a KO. Neto bubbles the final table, and we have nine players all take their seats at the FT of this week's Sunday Million. Neto cashing out for 6K in 10th place, Joe. And I don't know, kind of feel that you just got to fold the fives there and wait for one of the shorter stacks to bubble. Maybe I'm kind of looking at it the wrong way. I mean, I, I think that... Folding is certainly fine. I think that anything but an all-in is probably okay, right? Like maybe just see a flop and miss the flop and fold then. Um, but either way, yeah, it seemed like a lot of uh, big blinds to get in pre-flop on the final table bubble. But hey, you know what? Fortune favors the bold, except for that case. But every other time. So let's just go round the table. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do the players in reverse chip order. We have got Zapolution playing from Germany. Zaberdi is in the Czech Republic. Buster Chair is one of three Brazilians at this week's Sunday Million final table. Diego F.A. is from Argentina. Miller Maxim playing from Russia. Yamashita is Brazilian. Ray Maniac is playing from Romania. Yes, you're Romania. Dobrum is the last of the Brazilians, and Juicy J93 is a Canadian player whose name is Tyler Jardin, or Jardine. And Tyler won a WCOOP title last year, won Event 7 High, which was the 2K Potlim Omaha 8 or better event. Took down 51K for that WCOOP score. Juicy J, nice name. Club draw behind to the Jacks for now. And still running particularly well. Club on the river for the flush. Value bets. How fun. How fun to know that your 10 high flush is good here. Straighty, flushy, street flash, paired board. Oh, wow. And Diego considering making the call on the river with Jax. I mean, this is quite a good bluffing spot, too, I think. So, you know, for a third of the pot, you might be tempted to see if your opponent's got something like ace, king, no club here. I think there might be just a little too much that's beating you. Nope. There goes the call. There's a lot of combinations of one club hands out there, I think. So with the blinds, at, well, the blinds are soon going to be 200, 400. So let's talk about the next blind level. Zappa, short. Zaberdi, short. Buster Chair, not healthy. Diego, not overly healthy. I mean, I, because it took so long for the final table bubble to burst, Joe, because we were hand for hands for so long, yeah. I, 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 I don't think it's going to be too much longer until we either see double ups or eliminations. There's going to be more all ins is what I'm saying. I mean, we saw it under the gun looseness the very first hand, right? I think we saw ace, yeah. deuce, raise under the gun as soon as we got here. I think, you know, this is a benchmark for a lot of people. Um, you know, I made the final table. I laddered up again, 
yes, there's laddering in every spot here, but we may be getting to the point, too, where people are, like, okay with the amount of money they've made, right? For a lot of people, that five-figure score, right? So maybe they don't they don't ladder quite as hard. Just a mental thing. Yeah. Queen 10, all right. <laughs> How much are you hating a straight, though, on a double-paired board? Uh, not when it gets checked to me. What about if you're Oof. facing a bet on the river of 742,000? I think I, call, I think I call this. I really do think I would call there. And Yamashita calls to move into second place on the leaderboard with 14.7 million. Juicy J still leading with just over 26 million. All the payouts now on screen. Next player out, $8,367. Laddering with every single KO all the way up to that first place payout of more than $108,000. As I say, I, I'm, not good, I'm not good enough to fold the straight there. Yeah, yeah. Dobrum and Juicy again. A little gut shot for Dobrum. He's coming okay. seven. Hey, look, what did I say? When you uh, when you have a straight draw, you make a pair. In this case, a pair is good. <sighs> King, queen, high for Juicy J. Folds the two overs to the board. On to the next hand. Miller Maxim and the wind, the windmiller. Them's the jokes. I don't even, maybe it's not a joke. Maybe they're, they actually are, come from a long line of Millers. Maybe. Maybe this player from Russia is a Miller whose name is Maxim. Yeah, all right, Maxim Miller. Maximilian. Hey, remember, remember Maxim Magazine? Remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. You probably never had this phase, but I definitely had the phase where I thought Maxim Magazine was the coolest thing I had ever seen. I had a phase where I'd flick through it, but at no point did I ever think it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> Oh, man, Dilbrum's probably so pissed right now. Look at that. That's just a seven. Nobody folded a six, right? No, but if they did, they'd be pissed. Oh, yeah. Welcome, Aloha Dance TV's raiding party. What's up? We always appreciate a good viewer dump on a Monday night. Nine's holding. It would be a real shame if they didn't, to be perfectly honest. Nobody, and I mean nobody, deserves to lose to 10-4. Even worse, 4-10. There you go. And the price of poker is going up. James, did you know that this is when the real poker starts? I didn't, but thank you for informing me. I appreciate yeah. the information. So 200,000, 400,000. And what Zappa got now? Like two and a bit big blinds? Yep. But this ain't the one. 
No. Definitely not. I mean, look, you can just sit back and hope that someone blasts off like Neto did on the final table bubble with the pocket fives. Play for the ladder. Well, I think we're going to see a few chips go in here. Probably going to be so much action in front of Zappa that they shouldn't really get it in with ace five, even with two and a big, a bit big blinds. Especially once Ray Maniac is going to be at risk. Right? Like, this is the only point to getting down to two and a half big blinds. You have no fold equity. No. So it really would make no sense to just call it off here in an attempt to triple or quadruple up with ace five. You no. really want Ray Maniac to go broke in this spot. Which is unlikely to happen because this three bet will probably be greeted by folds around the table, including Juicy J, the original Razor. All right, Zappa, come on. Eight deuce. Gross. Scarpine, who's asking about my trip to San Diego to play live poker, I'll be giving all of the details, all the results on this week's of the uh, episode of the Poker in the Airs podcast. I assume that's where you heard me talk about it the first time. That is where I will tell the rest of the tale. It'll be out on Thursday. You Just better gobble it up while you, while you can because there's no more coming for a little while. Yeah, I was going to say that it'll be the last podcast of this run, if you like before the summer break. It will also be the last retro stream this coming Thursday. Rosero asking, got a link to the podcast? Yes, we do. Thank you for your question. Here there we, we go. go. Zappa all in with Ace Queen and Ace Deuce. Has Zappa at risk, but it is Domination Nation in Zappa's favor. And just has oh. to fade that deuce, does, and Zappa survives. Not just survives, more than doubles up. So Zappa no longer the shortest stack. Zabirdi is now the player at immediate risk. 1.25 million, three bigs. Zaberti switches to the shortest stack and picks up seven deuce. Good question, the huge guy. Is there every indication that the podcast will certainly be back after the summer break? I would say nothing is ever certain, but I have a pretty good feeling we will be back after the summer break. Absolutely. The, the intention is to come back in August. We've always taken a summer break. Since we launched the podcast in 2015, we've always taken the summer months off. This is nothing unusual. And Zaberdi here with Ace Jack. Juicy J waiting in the small blind with nines. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Just lying in the weeds, waiting to snap it off with the stars nuts. And this is going to be a race, a flip that Zaberdi needs to win to survive. Isolating, and here we go. Ace high flop, nine on the turn though. What? And that set of nines is good. We have our first oh. elimination from the final table. Zaberdi out in ninth place, cashing for $8,367.80, and Juicy J93, that is Tyler Jardine, increases his chip lead with eight players remaining. 24.1 million now for Juicy J. I'm gonna Google Tyler Jardine and see if he's actually juicy. Oh yeah. Real juicy. I'm not sure which one of these people he is to be honest. Juicy. Image currently unavailable. Okay. With the advantage here, king high versus queen high. 
They've got some ri live results too, though. So my guess is they're one of the favorites here, especially with that chip stack. King High holds. Nine hundred and twenty five thousand. Bluff on the river from Dobrom. Do we get the hero call from Juicy J with King High? Thinking about it, running through the hands that Dobrum might have. Wow. We haven't seen a king high hero call in a long time. We saw one actually on the final table bubble when we were hand for hand. Oh, well, I didn't. But of course, we've just seen one. But not on this occasion. I give Juicy J credit, though, for thinking about that. Maxim the chance to put some pressure on Zappa Lucian. But don't forget about the Queen Balls. Nope. Yes, Chris Pokey, you are correct. The last hero call was with King Ten, exactly the same hand that GCJ had there. So three bet from Ray Maniac with the Queens. 3.4 million. A little time bank for deception. Maybe trying to get Miller to put in the rest. I mean, everyone kind of handcuffed right now by Zappa Lucian playing just shy of 2.4 million. And there goes the handcuffed fold. Okay. Well, there is a mosquito in the room. I need to take evasive action. There's mosquitoes in England? You lived here for two years. You're telling me that you never encountered a mosquito? I don't think so. They live around water, dude. There's water everywhere around here. Die, you bastard! There you go. Got it. Um, oh, my goodness. Want to see it? Well, Peter's going to have a real issue with that. My God. We are going to get letters. Sorry, Peter and Paul. <laughs> James is a mosquito magnet, by the way. I would believe oh that if there are God. not many mosquitoes in England, they're all by James's flat. You know when you squish a mosquito and there's, like, blood, and you immediately yeah. start going, oh, God, is it mine? And you're looking for the bites. Luckily, this one, I think it was empty. Luckily, it's just someone else's blood. <laughs> James, did you know that when you hear a mosquito buzzing in your ear, that's the, the male distracting you so the female can bite you? Is that true? I might have the, the genders reversed. <laughs> Apologies. There's no such thing as a male and female mosquito. They're all the same. But, uh, yeah, it's one or the other. They're like, yeah, so that you go up here, and they're like, bang, down there. Oh, my God. Zappolution all in and dominated. Yep. And Zappolution is, gets there with the straight. Zappolution doubles up again. Now, that will see Buster Chair 
become the shortest stack, Joe. Buster Chair with 3.5 million is eight. So the baton eight. keeps getting passed. Yeah. For person we are most rooting to be eliminated. And by we, I mean the people at the table, not us. We don't care. Yeah, I wasn't surprised to see early eliminations from this final table. I did think we'd see more than one more? Out in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. All right, we get to see the two big stacks go to war and blind on blind. Only one spade and one straight car card. Probably not going to be the collision we're all hoping for. No. Maybe we can get to a turn and have like the nine of spades or something. Ha! Someone's asking you a soccer question. What a ding dong. Tell you what, Joe, give me the question, I'll answer it. I know everything James, there is how, to know. James, how deep can England go in the Euros? They've got a solid start against a good Croatia side. It was a good side, uh, a good, good, good start. I, I think they could definitely make it through the group stages. Um, I, you know, obviously the semi-finals. That's where it becomes problematic, especially when the semi-finals are decided on penalties. But, you know, it's a game of two halves, Brian. And, you know, I've, I've, I've every, I've every hope that they will, they will kick the ball into the net. I, James, I've heard England's got a lot of strong kickers this year. You know, the, there's the, some the, good feet on that team, even better legs. The, the kicking was exceptional. Yeah. Hell of a hell of a foot on some of those guys. It, it, it was. It was exceptional. You got to get the lucky bounces, too, you know. But hey, if they can stay healthy, if they get the, a couple of lucky bounces, wh whoever wants it more football might be coming home. It's a, it's a weird one because I only realized the other day that there isn't doesn't seem to be a single host country like it's being played all over Europe. And uh, PGD Poker says, real question is Stanley Club Cup playoffs? Yes. Thank you for your question. Yeah, they're <laughs> happening. So we've now got blinds of 250,000, 500,000. Putting the pressure on those shorties as if they weren't under enough pressure. Uh, so one thing that came up during the last session, Joe, and apologies, I can't remember who it was, asked the question. Zappa's avatar apparently is a child from a Kinder TV commercial or a series of Kinder commercials which led us back to the 1980s kinder commercial with the egg. I'm sure it's a video I've shared with you at some point. No? You have shared it. This is me shaking my head about watching it. That's, oh, I see. That is, I almost just said the F word. That is nightmare fuel. I that knew. is absolute nightmare fuel. I, I will knew. not watch it again. Having known you for 11 years, there's no way that I hadn't shared that video with you. Did you watch the video with Blobby that I sent you a couple weekends ago? <laughs> Blade Runner with Mr. Blobber, yeah. <laughs> Zappolution shoving in a good spot. Gets it through. It's neck and neck between Diego and Buster now. Buster, the slight favorite to be the Buster. Grafton for Dobram raises to 1.25 million. Oh boy, Diego could get hurt here. Late position raise. Diego should probably be getting it all in and does gets the fold from the better hand though. 
Wow. Called by the worst hand. Uh, What's happening? Dobrum, I think, just felt priced in, but Dobrum does not improve, and Ace High holds, and that is going to be a double up for Diego. We are still, still eight-handed. Jack, maybe worth a peel now with a stack? No. Uh, I guess it's a full million. Yeah, that's too much. 14 bigs. I didn't realize <laughs> how big the blinds are right now. Yeah, no, it's huge. It's it's become ridiculously shallow. And as I said, I, I don't quite understand how we still have eight players. But them's the breaks. At least we can see the big stacks play pot still. Sarver says, Do pre cool rays made BB food saved him. Thank you for your comment. Look at Ray. Poor Ray. Oh no, another Jack on the turn, too. No way they got a jack, Ray. That is a juicy J on the turn if I've ever seen one. So very, very juicy. Oh, well, Ray. Look, we all know a Ray, and this is classic, that person. <laughs> this is classic Ray right here. Checks again. Ray finally gives it up. Oh, man, if Ray had gone for it a third time, that would have been such a shame. You do you, Ray. You do you. Yeah, right? Look, you still got, you still got 18 million. Playing like that's what got you there in the first place. Couch Nick, if Ray keeps playing like that, he will be an X-Ray. King Queen under the gun. I feel like this is a fold with Buster Chair. Yeah. And for Buster Chair, is this an opportunity to move all in, although there's a chance? No. Folds the deuces. You know, I think that's okay. Five I know big that blinds? You, you're the shortest stack, but the thing is, you're definitely getting called and you're flipping against everything. Oh, like, I, I, so. I, I kind of understand that. Unfortunately, I just go into autopilot at that point. I'm like, have pair, we'll gamble. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. I'm just saying I understand it. Hey, Joe, you got a fan. Acid XD says, hey, Joe, I followed this channel before I started watching the big game series on YouTube. I very much enjoyed your jokes and wits on season two right now. Thank you for the content. I, I hate sarcasm. You're banned. And we got uh, Zeppelation getting it in with the flush draw jack high. Was the best hand. Got a fold.
I believe you asked it. Don't waste your five dollars subscribing to this channel. Probably not supposed to say that. <laughs> it's all free anyway. <laughs> yeah, but then you, get to, you don't get to spam the chat with Joe's face if you don't you subscribe. You do get my face. If you, re if you really would enjoy having my face, then you can subscribe to the channel. Although you have now reached a physical state where your Twitch avatar that people can subscribe for and, and post looks better than your actual visage. I mean, that's the case, I think, with most avatars, but it's it's a very wide discrepancy at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Dicey move, but with Buster Chair in the big blind, the place that you're most likely to get called. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Well placed. Wow, Acid XD did it. It was the promise of your face. <laughs> Enjoy those emotes. Look at we got Ray, Ray Maniac just folding the King Queen after the big stack opens under the gun. Correct. I mean, Juicy J has picked up on the vibe of this table, right? Yeah. And Juicy J's like, this is fine. I will just happily suck up, hoover up 40, 50, 60% of the chips in play if everyone just wants to sit there and wait for other players to go broke. Yeah, I think the only player they really have to worry about who seems to be playing like a little... Cautionless is Zappa. Zappa, you know, has gotten it in a bunch of times with a shorter stack out there. I think in good spots. I don't think they're like particularly reckless spots, but they're not overly tight from what I can tell. Yamashita has Ray Maniac dominated. This is a defense spot. Like, you just simply can't fold Queen Jack. Bottom two. I mean, what's ridiculous right now is because of Buster Chair sitting there with, like, what is it now? Two big blinds? You got players folding sixes, players folding tens. Everyone is just handcuffed, waiting for Buster Chair to bust. People absolutely urinating on the Grafton rule. I mean, what a sick spot here. This is a really sick spot, Yamashita con continuing, like... Queen Jack, like you don't, you don't love this spot right now with ten million. Yeah. Yamashita, having to, you know, you can't go broke here, but luckily, I don't think Yamashita can really keep the pressure on either. What do you think the river's going to be, Joe? Is it going to be the ten or the king? Oh, it's the king. Oh, so sick. You know it. You just know it. Th I actually didn't think it was going to happen for once. I was going to be like, no, it, we're good here, but nope. Uh, so we now have a straight eat flushy board. Two pair now does not look overly strong. And Ray Maniac may elect to check. No. Oh, wow. Is this a blocker? I think that the big blind has a lot of tens in their range, to be perfectly honest. I, mean, I don't think. You don't love you don't calling cool. here with King Queen, but you kind of have to. And yeah. Yamashita up to 15 million now. Yeah, a quarter pot bet. They're likely betting more than that with the 10. Uh, new poll. Do you like the 10 10 fold? No, I don't, because you would have had a straight. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I hate the 10 9 of Hearts fold even more, because they would have had a flush. If, if the Grafton rule had been followed there, we would have had a flush. Yeah, 9-10 suited. Although, I, 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 I agree folding 10-9 suited with that stack and, and the action. It makes perfect sense, but it's the Grafton rule, guys. Mm. It supersedes all other rules. 
Now, Alex Bays asks a very important question. Did you see Money Plane and what did you think? We have not seen it, Alex, but we have earmarked this as a future Poker Movie Monday recorded on a Wednesday, released on a Thursday episode of the podcast. We established earlier on that the show goes on summer break after this week. We'll be back in August, September. And one of the shows we will be doing is a Money Plane special. Anytime we find out there's a new movie about poker or gambling out there, we will track it down, we will watch it, and we will poke holes in it. And I've got a feeling that there are many, many holes to be poked in this one. Buster Chair is about to have a gigantic hole poked in them, I think. I mean, does have the best hand for now, but I mean, this bet of 15,456 is missing a comma to get a fold. Oh, wow. wow. It, holds. it bloody holds. No one will be more surprised that it held than Buster Chair. Still the shortest stack. What, seven big blinds now? You know what? I don't know how to put this in chat as like a poll or like whatever, but I would say that I don't think Buster Chair is going to be the next player to go broke. I'm not sure anyone's going broke. I actually think that we're going to be here in the middle of the night and there's still going to be eight players. And they'll have one big blind each and everyone's just folding. Chris Poker says, I love seeing the short stack double up. And you're banned. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Alex, if you have seen Money Chair, no spoilers. Spoilers equal death. Money Plane. What did I call it? Money Chair. <laughs> <laughs> You decided to merge the name of the movie with the name of one of the players at the final table. I, I want to see Money Chair now. Money Chair could well be the sequel to Money Plane. Oh, I have I, I I made a I made a Moray Monday like last week. I have one to post today. I do love a good Moray Monday. <laughs> Blinds three hundred thousand, six hundred thousand with a sixty k anti. Friendship is tragic. Clearly, does not listen to the podcast because they would know that we covered House of Games on a previous episode. 80% of people think that Buster Chair will not be the next player out. Interesting. Our podcast has been going so long that we could probably re-revisit certain <laughs> movies. I think we could break down every single hand in Casino Royale, like street by street. I wanted to do a bit with Griffin at the World Series a couple years ago when I was still working for them, where they had had a, like a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial that summer of someone like moving all in, and I wanted to break, have him like break down <laughs> the strategy of like moving all in with a bucket of chicken, but do it like completely earnestly. Somehow I didn't get asked back to that job. I'm... <laughs> That's a definite case of don't call us, we'll call you. These are like these are the ideas I'm pitching. So uh, and then and then all of a sudden I'm not coming back. It's like we're putting together the team for the uh, 2017 World Series. Chicken guy. Yeah, no, no, he's not coming back. Uh, so we're bringing Staves back. Wait, the guy who said that we should do a four-minute piece analyzing a KFC commercial. Yeah, that one. No, he's uh, he's not coming back. <laughs> Queen suited. This is the spot, buddy. This, you can't fold queen suited. You're the shortest stack. This is not like the deuces. You're not 
flipping against everything. When you hit a king or a queen, you're generally in pretty good shape. Suited connectors. There it is. I don't know if the tank is genuine thinking, if there's some sort of double reverse rep a monster tank sort of thing going on there, possibly. Yeah. Domination nation, queen's perfect. Queen is perfect. And it's trip queens for Buster Chair. He's now up to 6.1 million. And Buster Chair is now fifth in chips. Diego, Zappa, and Miller Maxim all shorter than Buster Chair. So Zappa electing to just 4x here instead of moving all in. I don't think it'll matter, but this is generally like a little obvious. Uh, when you're all in, all in, all in, and then all of a sudden you're just like two or three or four axing. But nope, it is going to work. Ace Jack versus Kings. Kings holding. Ace on the turn, oh. and that'll do it for Zappa Lucian. And the German is gone in eighth place. Finally, we get our second KO from this Sunday Million final table, and Zappa Lucian cashes out for just over $11,500. Meanwhile, Juicy J93 has moved up to nearly 38 million. The second biggest stack, Joe, is Ray Maniac, who's got 13 million. Uh, you guys want to make a deal? You guys want a deal? And as has been evidenced, Juicy J absolutely understands the situation at this FT and will leverage that chip lead and will put pressure on all the other stacks Conscious of Wayseal's theorem being in play. <laughs> Conk says, can we still win chests on stars by watching the stream? Conk, as long as you are playing on PokerStars at the same time as you're watching the stream? Yes. <laughs> That's correct, Bara Jakuta. Buster Chair is not the next player out. Kings, too. Oh, I haven't gotten over that yet. Not, not cool, Zeus. Lobster wants to know what's Weasel Bits Theorem. Way seals theorem. Hey, if people aren't going to watch retro and not see the birth of modern poker theory, you know how if them. you want to, you know if you want to like understand, not understand, but if you really want to pick up on everything happening in any Marvel thing, you got to watch like Agents of Shield, and then you got to read like a supplemental comic book, and then you got to watch WandaVision, and then you got to watch the hour long dance scene that they shot from Falcon and the winter soldier to get the Easter egg that they put in season seven uh, post credit sequence for Loki. That's what you got to do to get all our inside jokes. You got to listen to the podcast. You got to watch the Sunday million. You got to tune into poker stars retro. You got to watch the EPT live streams. You got to watch Hank's home game. It's all interconnected. James Hardigan is the Kevin Feige of the poker stars universe and he's got this huge bulletin board full of all the note ways theorem and the the uh, the under the gun limp the, the gibbons and the <laughs> and all the things that are going to come together oh wow i and he wish... snaps his fingers and I... and, un and does undoes half my salary wish I had a tiny, tiny fraction of Kevin Feige's talent and a tiny, tiny <laughs> fraction of Kevin Feige's wealth. <laughs> That's right. The PSCU. E6 Ola. The only thing you don't have to do is read our Twitters. Those are both waste of time. But James is informational, at least. Mine is... Pure dribble. Can we make it all a right, Miller Maxim? How about we make it a multiverse so there are multiple winners of this Sunday Million event? He 
he is inevitable. There you go, buddy. See? Nothing to be scared of. Ten deuce. Rob Grimm asks, which one of you has your headset around the wrong way? Neither. Thank you for your question. That was a genuine answer, by the way. That wasn't me being facetious. It's just that James is in England, so everything appears to be on the opposite side because he's on the opposite side of the Atlantic Ocean. But we're actually wearing it on the same side, the correct side. I will demonstrate the microphone can be can go this way or you can wear the headphones around the other way. And Wait, why would you ever side. need it in why, why would you ever need it in the back of your neck like that? Because then you take the headphones off, obviously. And traditionally, if you are sat next to each other, if you are talking to someone in that direction, you have the mic facing this way, and the person who's then sat to your left would have the mic on the other side, so you're always talking into the mic. So they are designed to go both ways deliberately. Just like me in college. Well, let's just go on a little bit. Come on, guys. Pick up the pace. I'm just going to talk more, guys. The, more, the longer you take, the more of this you're going to have to deal with. I mean, Juicy J is close to having a three to one chip advantage over the rest of the field. Because they're all about the money, money. Cruzo, that's the worst explanation ever. Well, how do you want me to explain it better than that? The Cruzo, why don't you give it a shot? No, let's give Cruzo a chance. Um, yeah, Cruzo, I'd love to see you explain how these headsets work, especially now your chat privileges have been revoked. Good oh, luck. Oh, Cruzo, <laughs> you banned. Thank you for your comment. Oh, Diego, not going to get any action here. Happy to pick up the blinds and nannies, though, honestly. We got three... Water treaders. Hey, speaking of soccer, though, that that soccer guy is going to be okay, right? The guy who I hope so. Looked like looked like he died on the field. Someone showed me that. I was like, why are you showing me this? I hate soccer. <laughs> I think um, one of the questions that's come out of that, by the way, is like, what what host broadcaster should do in that situation and whether you should actually be showing that in real time, whether they should have cut away sooner. It's hard to know, right? Yeah. I don't think... It, I, it's very rare I see sports broadcasts be like, we gotta get every second of this horrific thing that happened. Most of the time, once they realize what it is, they do cut away. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's you know, there are questions to be asked now about how it was covered, but also about I think the pressure that the Denmark team were under to continue playing the game the same night. I mean, look, there's certain players that, you know, there might be nothing wrong with them when that happens. I'm not going to name any names. That's very nice. We appreciate Croaks here. I'm not sure I can get away with reading that long of a compliment. <laughs> Pair of sixes, heart draw, Ray Maniac folds the four. What a what a fish. What a nitty fish. 
And Juicy J close to the 40 million mark now as we get the all-in from Diego with Ace King. Mm -hmm. Queens for Dobrom. This is the sickest and classicest of all races. And it's a race that Diego is going to need to win. Maxim fold already. Thank you. Um, if he's to survive. Yeah, gone. King nope. on the flop. And that is going to be the double up for Diego. And still seven players remaining. This is a really, really weird dynamic. Mm -hmm. Every player, every player other than Juicy J has fewer than 20 big blinds. It's going to do that that Zoom thing I talked about where it's just going to go... And this will be the last hand of this session. Round to the blinds, and it's a walk for Yamashita, and the players are going to go on break. So, yes, we have seen two eliminations from this final table. In fact, in the last 60 minutes, we've seen a grand total of three bust-outs. Neto Diaz on the final table bubble. Zaberdi out in ninth. Zapolution out in eighth. And now seven players remain. Six of them have hardly any chips. Juicy J, the monster chip leader with 39 million and still firm favorite to win that first prize of more than 108K. Let's get Griffin Benja back into the mix. Griffin, I appreciate you on break during that last session. I don't know whether you saw any of the action towards the tail end of that session, but... They are playing, what's the word I'm looking for, conservatively. Yeah, and it appears to be uh, Juicy J's final table. Uh, we talked about the 20 million that they were able to acquire at that final table bubble, just acquiring, acquiring, acquiring. And now, final table's here. It's nine-handed, more hands to be distributed, but uh, even tighter play now that we're looking at the big dollars. And uh, Juicy J is doing exactly what they need to do uh, to take home this title. It's uh, you know, it's a long shot for anyone else to, to get even close, as we see, as you mentioned, no player even above 20 big blinds. Yeah, I, I just think it's a really awkward thing, I guess, from a spectator's point of view. And look, we're not important, right? The audience. It's great that we can watch this. It's great that we can put on a show. But ultimately, it's about the players who are at that table, who've invested $109 or more if they bought in for multiple bullets, playing for significant sums of money. But the problem is, Griffin, when it's like this, it does stop there being action. But that doesn't mean the players are doing anything wrong. They're right to approach it like this and to try and earn those ladder spots. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, though, this is really, uh, you know, not familiar territory for probably any of these players. So it's they have nothing, no no experience to really draw on. You know, they've played final tables surely before, uh, you know, maybe for thousands, maybe just for hundreds of dollars. When you're talking about a first place prize of over 100,000, not only is this probably the first time they've had this opportunity, but it may be, you know, one of the few they get in their poker lifetime. So they, they really don't want to make any mistakes. And sometimes it's easier to just press that fold button because then you're still in. Yeah, Joe, I think you may be one of the first people to have made the bold prediction that Buster Chair, even when he was down to two big blinds, would not be the first player to bust. In fact, Buster Chair has now outlasted two players at this final table. Um, my question is, though, do you think Juicy J has any chance of losing this? Or at the very least, is there any way Juicy J does not get heads up? Yeah, I think there's a significant chance that Juicy J, um, I say they're a little bit better than 50-50 to make it to heads up right now, probably like a 60-40. Um, there's still way too much that can happen. You know, when the stacks get this short, um, you know, variance plays a huge role as well, right? Like when people are just piling it in pre-flop and just a couple of hands, you know, you can call off spots where you're a slight favorite or where you're slightly behind but you're getting the right math to call it can happen very easily uh, when you're playing against these short stacks especially when some of them are kind of reluctant to get it in and aren't shoving in all the spots they should uh, and therefore you kind of feel like you're you should their ranges are wider than they really are and you can just get doubled through so easily and then of course there's a situation where these uh, shorter stacks sort of combine and then all of a sudden you get into an all-in with one of those combined stacks and now you know you're second and third in chips again so 
the, the favorite to make it the heads up for sure, but uh, I wouldn't say any better than like 65, 35. Yeah. Um, would you, what's your take on it, Griffin? I'm, I'm, and I'm not just basing that on, I guess, the stack size, but also the edge that Juicy J may have as a player. We established earlier on that this is Tyler Jardine. This is a WCOOP champion, potentially more MTT experience than many of the other players at this FT. Yeah, I think uh, speaking to what uh, Joe was really talking about is that, you know, just because Juicy J has 30 million chips doesn't mean, you know, he's just going to slowly gobble everyone up. The reality is, is that variance is going to play its part. And a lot of the time, the all-ins that eliminate players aren't necessarily going to include Juicy J. They're going to be t between two players that both yeah. have, you know, 8 million, 9 million, and suddenly one person gets knocked out. That person jumps up to 18 million. Maybe they gobble up a guy with 5 million. Suddenly they have 23 million and Juicy J, uh, you know, doesn't have as big a chip lead as we thought. I think that the odds of Juicy J getting to heads up are probably a bit better than 60-40, but actually winning the event um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily better than a, you know, 40, 50 percent chance. Well, play's about to restart at the final table. I'm going to take a short break. I will leave you in the hands of Mr. Joe Stapleton and Mr. Griffin Benja. All right, my babies, the final one, two, three, seven players here in the 109 Sunday Million six figure score up top. And Juicy J actually all the way up to that 39 million chip mark. Dobrum, King Nine, late position. Does have the best hand. But hard to know it. King Nine, I think, um, probably going to want to find yourself finding folds in this spot, but trying to get a little cheeky with a min raise with that decent blocker i like it got to find a way to acquire chips somehow and at this stage uh you know having eight million even though you're sub 15 big blinds where normally you wouldn't be doing a lot of raised foldings you know you you are do have the, the opportunity to do it because there are those shorter stacks it looks strong too you know like there there aren't a lot of people exactly. min raising right now out of your sort of small ish stack but one you should be protecting like for you to be stepping out of the safety of of foldsville you know it, it's going to be tough for folks to know if you've got a hand like King Nair, if you've got a hand like Kings. Well said. Yamashita yeah, jams the button, gets through. Queen Jack for do I mean, these aren't fun spots either, by the way, to have this stack and, like, to get King Nine, to get Queen Jack. Like, you just feel so gross. Yeah, I think the only difference here, uh, even though technically Queen Jack is a more playable post-flop hand than a, than something like King Nine off, you know, you you have a lot more players to get through, and you're running right into Juicy J in the big blind. That's going to be the big difference. When there's just three players behind, some short stacks that don't have any sort of maneuverability, I'm going to be interested to see how Bust, Buster Chair uh, plays this Ace Three suited. It's it's definitely a clear shove, and we can see would run into the Ace Jack of Ray Maniac, but. Mistake me if I'm wrong, but a few rotations ago, I think Buster just open folded the pocket nines for ten big blinds. Um, so some some is it, did I misread that? Maybe he had eight nines. There was a pocket deuces that they folded. Okay. Um, I thought I saw two nines when I first sat down, but maybe it was a mis misread. It could have been that I was yelling at someone in chat at the time, but we've got the domination situation. Buster chair the favorite to go. Buster next. Two diamonds no. now. No diamond on the river. It's a jack. Instead, we finally lose Buster Chair Busto in seventh place. $15,889. Uh, laddered up considerably uh, $4,000 by just not going broken ace. So well done. And Miller Maxim doing that cheeky little not all in with Kings. No action. And Juicy J going to be able to do their thing here with the Ace-9. Wouldn't expect any resistance from these three poor hands. Fat Dog 74 says he chooses A3 to shove, question mark. So something you have to pay attention to, Fat Dog, is what position you're in, right? Like if two or three people have folded behind you and it's just the blinds in front of you and you have Ace-3 suited... That makes a lot more sense than shoving something like pocket fives under the gun or or even, you know, that same hand under the gun. It's a lot different when, you know, even having one or two players who have already 
folded their hands, it, it makes a huge difference. But it is worth noting in the case of Buster Chair, as it was confirmed in the chat, that they did open <laughs> okay. fold pocket nines, which is strange. No, no, just because it's like it's yeah. surprising to see him shove the ace three suited when we saw the, the fold of the nines. I think I think both are clear shoves, but it's it is curious. I think even two or three hands after folding the nines. They uh, uh, Buster did shove the queen four suited in the small blind, so it's interesting how sometimes maybe just in the moments you get a, get a weird feeling like oh I can't shove this I don't want to bust before this guy and then and then in the end you find yourself all in with ace three. <laughs> Dobrum raising again, Cruzo trying to be a know it all. I got good news. If you got a headset, you can turn your head left or right. You will still speak into the microphone. I hope I won't get banned for this comment out. In fact, you are going to get banned for that comment because <laughs> it was unnecessary and it's incorrect. When you turn your head to the left, you're pointing your mouth to the left away from the microphone. Yes, is the microphone still going to pick it up, but you're still speaking this way. Idiot. Sorry. That was too far. I made it weird. Dobrum, deuce, let's focus on the poker for a minute. Now, this might be a good opportunity on about 14 big blinds for Yamashita to nope. either go with a min open or a fold, but not a shove. Too many chips, too many shorter stacks. I think that's some good discipline finding a fold there. You know, so we talked about how you want to kind of find these spots that around the cutoff the way that Dobrum has with those that ace four and the king nine, but I think Yamashita wise to not get out of line with the queen ten. Juicy J raise and take it up over 40 million now. Sevens, however, is gonna be very, very tricky. I think an argument to fold, but certainly one to shove. Goes with the min raise. That was gonna be your last option, wasn't it? That was the third one, yeah. Uh, but gives a chance here for Dobrum with a... I like the min raise, but that means up it's probably 50, wrong. 50 hand, hard to find. Seven's doing great after this flop. Really, really nice, safe-looking flop there. And Juicy J over 40 million chips now. And another opportunity to get even richer. Sometimes when it's going your way this much, it just feels almost too good to be true, too easy. But as we spoke about on the break, Joe, um, things will eventually change. Some of these players will be knocking out others and have more soldiers to fight with. 8-5 suited, Juicy J. I think we might see a raise. Hell yeah, we do. Good call, Griff. Why is Miller Maxim getting the tissues? And such an annoying spot for Yamashita because as much oh, as you nice. want Perfect. to flop some equity, Perfect you see a flop. Spot. Boop. Two stacks with less chips. Three actually with Dobrum. And Couch Nick commenting on Twitch saying that Juicy now has half of the chips in play. I'm no math scientist, but that sounds probably right. <laughs> you know Griffin's really not bad at math when he calls it a math scientist. You know I can't add things. Miller, Max, and peeling off on that short stack. I think it's not the best candidate in King 5, but... Desperate times, desperate measures. If you're gonna do that, you gotta stop and go at least. Yeah, but you can't you can't stop and go without oh you mean if he had flopped something. Yeah. No. No, no just, now. Just, just go it. The guy yeah. has ends, he'll probably fold. I'm a big fan of the stop and go. I'm also a big fan of the go and go. <laughs> or the stop and stop where you just The stop and stop is what we're seeing here, which I also am yeah. pretty good at. <laughs> and Ray Maniac. Not seeing any benefit in betting the flop and just getting it in against a jack or a queen. Checks back. Is going to min bet the turn just to clear out hands like king five. Maybe something that is a bit of a straight draw like some goofy eight nine. 
I like when people say clear out. I got to use that more. Diego folds. That's right, Pasta. Math is idiotic. Miller Maxim probably just going to give this up. Yeah, and you can see the way that ICM can negatively affect those sort of not last place stacks in trying to acquire chips. That ace four was probably a clear shove with eight or nine bigs to try to get some chips. Would have worked, but you don't. And even Jack 10 may be there as well, but you just don't want to do it when Miller Max just has five big blinds. You want to get that pay jump um, in, in the amount of, you know, over $8,000. Time for Juicy J to put in another 3X, sir. Ray Maniac. Don't know why they would really want to tangle. It's annoying to have to fold your big blind over and over again. But, yep, time to give that up. 8,000 is 80 Sunday millions, Joe. That's, uh, that's playing the Sunday million every Sunday for the next year and a half. That's almost... Is it over a year? 80? How many Sundays in a year? Aren't there 52 weeks? 52, but how many Sundays? Oh, I don't know. Let's just assume 52. Close, I guess. Somewhere somewhere in the 52 to 55 range. Do we have any uh, math calendar scientists on the chat? All right. We got pocket tens for Miller oh, Maxim, pocket cool kings for time. Dobrum. Miller Maxim has been playing a little funny, but this one's pretty clear cut. Here's a question for you, Joe. Did you ever have a subscription to maxim magazine we were talking about maxim magazine moments ago i never did but i i wanted one i thought it was like the coolest <laughs> thing ever i just didn't have yeah. any money when maxim was popular so domination I. situation tens need some help and no luck come. no two outer for miller maxim sixth place for mm chicks cars gadgets cool stuff <laughs> Miller Maxim eliminated. And in sixth instantly place. another all in here as uh -oh. Juicy J gonna be happy to call off the seven big blinds with those two threes ahead on the flop. Oh, oh lots of outs for King Queen, but no, no dice. Back to back eliminations. There goes Diego. Diego gone in fifth place. Thirty thousand dollars. And we're Pretty down to four. Good day at the office, two days. So my I think we may have lost Joe, everyone. Just me now. And two kings for Juicy J93. It doesn't seem fair, especially because, as we can all see, Tobram with the ace 10 in the big blind, destined to go all in facing this raise. You know, Juicy J is raising everything from 10 5 suited to 8 5 suited. So, ace 10, you're licking your lips to get it in here. It does shove it in. And this is trouble. I'm here to rescue you, Griffin. Oh, well, there's a big all in here, and it looks like we're already in three. And we talked about how the card distribution, James, might find Juicy J with a competitor out there, but not if they just take them all out. 67.4 million chips with what appears to be something like 85 in play. So, whew. That was a crazy couple of minutes there. We just went. And now, look, James, look, look now. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> and it's over. We're heads up. It's going to be a straight for Yamashita. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So well, not quite I... yet. Ray Maniac still has chips, Griffin. And would be very interesting. I think Yamashita uh, yeah, should just call this ace check. You don't want to find yourself uh, shoving here on the 25 bigs, expecting to get a lot of folds from Juicy, but then running into it. Uh, we see Juicy J with the sixes. Would have been weird, but just call. I like that going to be able to see a turn here comfortably just play it real cool and interestingly griffin with all of those bust outs with all of that fast flurry of action juicy j has managed to not just maintain, but build that chip lead. Yeah, and, and kind of a crucial little mini bluff from Yamashita there. Luckily for them, didn't even need to bet that big. 
really had the bottom of their range with the ace jack high able to bluff on that eight of clubs on the river and get it through so that's a nice little confidence boost heading into presumably what's going to be a heads up battle very soon especially if these two hands have anything to say about it king queen versus king 10 domination nation diamonds as well and a 10 on the river means ray maniac survives You're doubles up through the chip leader And may have just delayed the inevitable, but 10 big blinds is a decent amount to work with. One more double up for Ray Maniac right back in this thing, especially if it's off Yamashita and you can really compete for that over $20,000 pay jump. King on King Crime here. Quite a nice advantage for Yamashita there. Is a chance that Juicy could go for two streets here, expecting Yamashita to have a lot of Queen X hands that might call again. Maybe some flush draw, straight draws that'll call again. So Juicy J is actually going to lose a fair bit here. But then again, it, it does become a bit scary for Yamashita facing this 4.9. You call here, about 15 million left. And you have that $20,000 pay jump to consider and decides to shove. And that's going to be quite weird for Juicy J. Not expecting Yamashita to be doing this with a lot of draws. Should probably expect Yamashita to have a decent king a lot of the time here. And makes a very, very good fold. Yeah, I think Yamashita's going to have to uh, pay his fealty to the chip leader, Juicy J. Not going to be seeing any walks from Juicy J blind on blind, but something like 8-4, you don't want to have to shove in there for the 10 big blinds blindly. Juicy J finding themselves with the bottom of their range at this 5-3, but may not want to start betting until the river does elect to stab here on the turn. Yamashita pretty high up in their range here with the ace-10. Still drawing to the nuts. 10's going to be good a lot of the time as we see. That is not a river that Yamashita necessarily wanted to see, but one that Juicy J might be too scared to bet, but also an opportunity to represent it. Yamashita is going to have some Jack X, 10 X, some King X hands that might fold to a bet over four, five, six million chips. And over bets it to the tune of 9.8 million. And no, no decision there for Yamashita, just lets it go. Well, I'll tell you what, Griffin, let's get Mr. Stapleton back into the mix. Joseph, what happened? A brief power outage here uh, in my neighborhood uh, when in the summertime on days like this, when it's 35 degrees, it's going to be relatively frequent that there's just like a brief Yo. little thing. All in, man. All in for a oh, second. Oh, my gets there on goodness. the river again. Wow. Whew. And now we got a real game. Anyway, not enough to shut down my computer, but did mess with my router a little bit. I had to wait for that to cycle back up again.
This time, Yamashita electing to limp call with the 10-8 suit. It obviously flops a lot better than the last limp fold Yamashita had. Flopping best here. And the kind of board that Juicy J recognizes that Yamashita is going to hit a lot of the time that they call check uh, limp call preflop. So checking back does turn a 7. And for all intents and purposes, I think this might just end up going... Yamashita's way because of with because of that seven showdown value for Juicy J. No point in bluffing. King on King. I mean oh. you're pretty happy to get a free flop here with King at five suited. Yeah. Oh. Maybe we should Maybe we should call Ace 5 offsuit stale though. <laughs> we could uh we could factor in a little a little stale comparison. Oh. Is that a pair man. of threes in the river? I thought this was going to be a chop pot but instead it's domination rotation and yes, we juicy got J. One, huh? Has caught a river against Ray Maniac who's been doing pretty good with river cards actually during this level. Okay, Joe, are you confident enough for me to leave you to it? Yes. Sorry. I mean, not really. I have no idea what's going to happen, but at the moment, I'm fine. Let's go. Yeah, let Do the it. lunatic run the asylum, James. Real good idea. <laughs> Three-handed, or as I like to call it, threads up. <laughs> I love it when you call it that. Pocket kings. It's just the, the kids Ray now. For the Ray Maniac. Pretty fair fight on this flop as far as improving for Juicy J. I mean, you can't really ask for much more when you have King 5 and you're up against Kings. Yeah. No, you really can't. And very few ways for Juicy J to win this pot outright. Yeah, and actually a good card for Juicy J to get that, uh, potentially get that free river card, which they do get. Now the question becomes, does Juicy want to get weird We've seen Juicy reaching the river with the bottom-ish of their range, which is kind of what Juicy J has here. You know, not much worse hands on this flop make it to this river than King-5 high. So wanting to target a hand like a queen, like a jack, you're going to have to bet pretty big. And an all-in will do it almost certainly. Ray Maniac now is sitting there being like, oh, well, he just has he just has jack-9. He just has 10-9. You know, he has even 9-7. Oh, man. I mean, three-handed, you're la in last place here. I, I would have a very hard time folding this. Well, you're just you're not beating any value hands is the thing, right? You're only beating a pure bluff. And a lot of the pure bluffs are King X, which you double block. And I'm sorry, but this is a perfect opportunity to talk about blockers, Joe. With two <laughs> kings in your hand, you really don't want to be calling hoping the guy has King 5. So I think you need to fold there, and it's just a good bluff and a really, really unfortunate situation. Um, and Juicy J showing why they belong at this final table and in serious contention win it all. Yeah, all right. We'll focus on the positive there of Juicy J just picking a really great spot, getting kings to fold. Well done. I'm not saying that calling with kings there is right. I'm just saying that I wouldn't be able to fold kings because I wouldn't know that about blockers. <laughs> I wouldn't know I'm blocking the bluff. It would be one of those, if he's got a straight, he's got a straight situations. Two X yeah, I'd be like, I have 11 million in chips left. I'm already last place. Like, I'm probably going to go out in the next hand like I call. <laughs> Chizit Jam says, just rewatching PSPC 2019. I can't remember who won. 20 left. Good luck, Griffin. Smiley face. Spoiler alert, I didn't win. Wait, what? PSPC from 2019. When I, finished, I hadn't got around to watching it yet. It's on, it's on my DVR. Somewhere between, I finished somewhere between 2nd and 20th. <laughs> Probably somewhere in between that. Juicy J. And Yamashita going toe-to-toe -to -toe on this 7-7 seven, seven deuce flop. One heart for Yamashita. King-10 has one spade. King-10, the best hand. Don't love this call from Yamashita. I think he's 
pushing his luck a bit here. You don't need to be playing three bet pots with the chip leader when the guy in third has ten big blinds. Just let him, you know, he, he's he has the power. You just kind of have to respect the the process because you're risking too much by getting involved. And right there, we even saw Juicy J had king ten of spades to Yamashita seventeen's ten eight of hearts. That flop comes ten high. Heck, by the river, if there's two tens out there, you bust in third place when you could have just waited and gotten that extra 20000 So I think that was a mistake from Yamashita. And I think they need to be really, really careful how they proceed for the rest of this three-handed battle uh, with Juicy J. Because Juicy J will put the pressure on, and it looks like Yamashita is willing to just battle when they shouldn't. You watch yourself, Griffin Benjer. Oh, I guess no. I guess it's Yamashita that needs to watch himself. It's happening okay, again. Right. I, mean, I take it back. I take it back. It's a very unnecessary check raise here from Yamashita. Uh, you know, such a good opportunity to take one off, see a turn card you're drawing to, kind of the effective nuts with the wheel. Um, you know, an ace will probably get barreled on, and then you'll have top pair. And instead, you've check raised, you've bet the turn, and now you're on the river on a double paired board with an ace with it under SPR1. <laughs> He's trying to get third place. I hate the fact I hate the fact that Griffin was so right about every single spot in this hand. Furious, raging. I mean, listen, if Yamashita somehow pulls the trigger here, which by the way, would be crazy because Juicy J has so many eights in their in their range. Oh, that's not enough of a trigger. Uh, four million ain't gonna do it, buddy. That's not even pulling the trigger. That's just like sort of Oh no. Oops. Oh no. Oh no no Ra no. Waving no, the no. gun unthreateningly towards someone. <laughs> no bueno, man. No bueno. Yamashita, I was your biggest fan. We had fans on Twitch. Just uh, just uh, sit the next couple plays out, all right? We're going we're gonna to let you sit out a couple innings. I mean, this it's better than is this. really working out perfectly for Juicy J. Just win like a decent pot off one, the decent pot off the other. Bop, 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 back and forth till they're both so short. There's nothing they can possibly do. Working even better for Ray Maniac, just getting to sit there and the prospect of a twenty thousand dollar page up, not having to do anything. It's, you know, it's the dream spot. Looks like someone on Twitch is triggered by the TikTok song. Juicy J. Let's not forget Juicy J is like making hands. Yeah, but also not making hands. The King-10 hand, that cost Yamashita, you know, in the neighborhood of five-plus million. That's a lot of chips. Not necessary to call the three-bet. Pocket force for Juicy J is just going to shove on the Ray Maniac. I don't know if we have seen a chip disparity threads up like this so great in a very long time. Oh, do you have to call this off with nine deuce? No. Okay. No. Good. And this is a, a concept we've, we've spoken about before too, Joe, for the viewers at home will find it certainly interesting if they're un unfamiliar. Yeah. Keeping it three handed here for juicy J is a right. very good thing. You're able to acquire so many chips. You don't want to just double them up to 13 million when they finally get a hand. Let's just raise, let them take this one here and there. We, even if you're pot committed, uh, you know, if you don't have a very good hand, just it's fine. You're just going to keep on making more and more and more. And that's a great example of that, you know, happened to have an amazing hand. There was Ray Maniac um, in the aces, but it's not always going to be aces. Sometimes you're going to be live. Exactly, right. Jamie C. Field. Don't call the nine dues of hearts. Keep them short. Ray Maniac limping in uh, and not a great flop for two tens. No club. And electing to give that free card for Yamashita. Free now flop, free turn. Betting and getting some value from those fives and fours and club draws like the queen of clubs. You have to imagine that your opponent would have bet a jack on the flop. So you're feeling real good about these two tens now. Real, real good now. Yeah, and probably going to want to bet again and not get too greedy, expecting your opponent to have a five and a four a lot. So something in the range of two, three million at most. Just want to get a call from that full house, but a check inducing instead. 
but the problem with trying to induce a bluff there from a missed club is that club is card is usually pretty high there so it might not be necessary to try to bluff you know your queen king high might be good all of it ray maniac 40 percent of it now that's going to put ray maniac up in front of yamashita slightly not for long <laughs> nope and a good spot to just shove here oh boy big effective. big old flip coming for yamashita won't be out call, listen it's not ace queen it's not ace king sorry will be um, out excuse me you're We're calling off here and you're up against ace three you're behind and yeah costing a lot of money this will be very very interesting i think if yamashita had something like ace 10 ace jack would probably have to go with it and ace nine is right on the cusp this is effectively an all-in from Remaniac. Does go for it, and this is a twenty thousand dollar flip coming up between. This Remaniac. is the flip I was talking about. Six is holding. Six is holding. Six is hold. Yamashita left with just a few chips. Deuces in the very next hand. Twenty-five percent of a blind and deuces. It's not how you want to go. Juicy J isolating. Wants to get all of the chips from this pot. Deuce is holding. Deuce is holding. Hey, that's a that's a double up. That is a double up to uh, one big blind. <laughs> so. I... <laughs> Finish him. So pair of fours are. That's it. Pair of fours is gonna be enough that's to great. dispatch Yamashita great in third blind. place. For $57,290. And we have got a heads up right now for what? 30K between these two and a four to one, excuse me, three and a half to one chip lead. Yeah, yeah Yam Yamashita played really, really great all the way from whenever we started watching pretty much with 30, 30 some odd people left when he started getting uh, involved on our screens until final three, he kind of blew it. Um, and that's just uh, maybe that's just an inexperienced thing from ICM, but you really got to play cautious. You need to just be like, juicy. This is your, you do whatever you want. Let's just knock this guy out and let's play for that 30,000. But didn't, uh, didn't let that happen. And, yeah, you know, but an incredible performance and a huge payday, probably biggest ever for Yamashita. Pair of nines, more than enough to keep Juicy J betting. And a four to one chip lead right now with that 18 million to 71 million. At this stage, it seems like all but inevitable, but a double up for Ray Maniac will bring the chips closer to something like 50 million to 40 million. So the tides can turn real quick just from one hand as we now up the blinds, leaving 18 big blinds uh, for Ray Maniac. Crazy Carl asks, when will we get to the break? Uh, when when the break gets here? Thank you for your question. Same time, every 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 hour. For about 10 years now. Maybe longer. Ray Maniacs, eight's good. Oh, look at this, a value bet. How cute. I haven't <laughs> seen one of those from Ray Maniac in a while. Oh, yeah, here we go. King three going to play as a call a lot of the time here for Juicy J. I'll be curious to see if we see a uh, float with the king three here from Juicy, simply because king high is going to be good decent amount of the time I on say the no. high boards. Oh, yes. It really Griffin, has you're too to do good with, at this. Well, it's the it's the back door, it's the nut nut club and the back door wheel. Um, you know, if Ray Maniac has seven eight of spades, gonna bet the flop. If they have Queen Jack off, they're gonna bet the flop. These are hands that King High is, you know, still ahead of. But once you see the bet on the turn, you know, you get out of there. But if that turn was a deuce of clubs, things could have got weird. Jay Finn asks, how many big blinds do they have, Joe? Uh, they have 
one big blind for every million chips. Thank you for your question. The human calculator. There he is. All right, 22.529584 big blinds and 66.8104.16 big blinds. Can someone check that? Can someone add that up? I'm telling you guys, the math scientist was here all along. <laughs> Ray Maniac continuing with that ace five, but running into the triple jacks. The Juicy J once again on the turn. Yeah. And lovely little lead here from Juicy J. I think this is the best way to get value uh, from bluff catchers, from queens. But ace five with a quick fold. Nice spot here for Ray Maniac to acquire some chips. Got those 20 blinds. Got the ace 10. Get them in there. Ray Maniac has cut this lead from four to one to three to one. And luck is turning against Juicy J a little bit here, but in these smallish pots. Interesting electing to lead here. I think it's because there are some turn cards that Juicy J can keep applying the pressure. Something like a seven of hearts would have certainly done well, but we can see that Ray Maniac does have that queen and that's why Juicy J is waving that white flag. I would like for Juicy J to wave that Juicy J a little bit. Joe. Who doesn't love a little juice, a little juicy, a little juicy hap? Yo, pass that juicy J. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about that. Oh, I know. <laughs> Not on this stream. Pair of sevens for Ray Maniac. Yeah, the bottom pair, but looking pretty good with that check back. And we've seen Juicy J with these no equity sort of hands decide to check the flop, which I like. Don't want to get yourself in trouble, but this is when Juicy J usually starts coming out swinging. But doesn't, and pretty much the nuts for Ray Maniac. Ray, give him some rope, Ray. No, Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Bad Ray, you little maniac. Look, if he had, if uh, Juicy J had pocket jacks, that would have been great. <laughs> hey, Griffin, when will you make another deep run in a huge tournament? We miss you making deep runs in huge tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm more of a live guy these days, and there hasn't been a lot of live tournaments, except in Joe's world, I guess. Uh, you know, somewhere in the States where I don't even think we can go to yet. There's been a pandemic. Have you heard of it? A pair of deuces here for Juicy J. I mean, how many people have the under on this heads up match already? And we talked about how quickly the chip edge could turn. And we see Ray Maniac has increased their stack by about 50%, and that now puts them at just a 2-to-1 deficit. Unlike that 4-to-1 deficit Ray Maniac was working with when we first got heads up. So, you know, the tides are turning a little bit. Yeah, 2-to-1 now, baby. Now here's where the real poker is. Oh. <laughs> the battle of the four nines. Who folds first loses. Oh, what do you know? Juicy J with the JJ. And is Ray Ray going to Ray Ray's? There we go. 6.3 million. 6.0 6. million. That's 0.3 less than Griffin projected. Human calculator. 
Shovestack says, what keeps you doing commentary for so many years, Joe? Love the passion. Money. Thank you for your question. <laughs> and one day they're going to pay him. <laughs> one of these days. Ooh, juicy oh, man, day. this could be it. Nah, 28 big blinds, 29 big blinds. Well, how come he can shove 28 big blinds and it's effective and this guy can't call? Different. He's suited. It's different. It's different. Why are you only criticizing the one? Say it would only be bad for him. They have almost the same hand. It's a suited ace, man. I say go for it. Oh, fine. You also would have called off the kings and busted in third because you're just like, oh, well, just it was a bluff there. I would have, I would have doubled up. <laughs> you actually, you're right. You're right. You would have. You're right. You're right. You would actually have the chip lead in this. <laughs> e6 Solis says, "Don't do it, Ray. Think about my channel points. We do have a big channel points wager happening. Club, 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 club." Hey, Joe. Do you think that Ray Maniacs? Uh, ado adopted last name is Skywalker. <laughs> Ray Skywalker. Could be. Could be. I can't wait till they reboot the last three Star Wars movies and go, Ooh. you know what? We didn't mean it. I can't wait till... Okay, I thought he was going to go all in. Yeah. Well, we just got to... You know what? We just got to keep signing those petitions, Joe. I haven't signed any. Should we sign some of these petitions? I think you... I think whatever our bet was, <laughs> even though I can't remember it, and I'm not saying you should pay me, but I think whatever it was, you lost. We had a bet? We had oh, a yeah. bet that, like, Snoke was going to come back or, like, not really be dead or or play a bigger part and not be... Like, his storyline not ended. I, I bet that, that there was some grit that there wasn't? I think so, yeah. And what did we bet? But now that I say it, I think I probably had the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call it a wash, okay? I was going to call it a wash even when I think I won, but now I think I lost, so I'm definitely calling yeah, it a yeah. wash. Yeah. <laughs> Ace Trey for Juicy J. Juicy J might... Uh, try to find some checkbacks with a hand like ace three, but let's deal with the raise. We talked a bit about this earlier, blind on blind. Sometimes you just want to check those raggy aces because you're so underwrapped when it comes ace high. Uh, now the boards are starting to coat, fall Juicy's way. Jack nine looking pretty sweet here. Hi, Raffalos asks, in the final Casino Royale hand, based on cards shown, Bond could have, have one other hand to win. What is it? Hashtag poker movie trivia. I'll tell you what. I know that James Hardigan is licking his lips right now. He is just, he must be right there and about to answer you. Well, he switched because he was already licking his copy of Casino Royale even before it got brought up. He just does that during his break. <laughs> I've seen him do it. <laughs> Pocket nines here for Ray Maniac, going for the three and a half X rays. Gonna get it through. Five. He has four six of spades or five seven of spades. I can't even remember what his actual hand was. So it was just obviously the lower end of the straight flush. So it probably would have been like three five of spades or whatever it was. But what was the actual hand? I feel like he had five seven of spades or five six or something. It was a one gapper. Seven five of spades. Yep. Master Plants confirms it. So and then High Rafello says no, he had the only straight flush possible. But someone else had quads, so how could there be an have one other hand to win? <gasps> Higher quads! No. What? Better full house, I think. Maybe ace eight. Why am I still caring about this? <laughs> it's a fun question if there's <sighs> actually an answer to it. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Didn't someone have quads? Someone says, haven't seen the movie. Spoiled. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry that that movie got casino spoiled. 
Ace Jack out in front of the King High flop. It was flush versus flush versus full house. So I guess Bond could have had the quads. So wait, she, Le Schiefer didn't have quads? He just had a boat? Yeah. Why, why is he getting a billion dollars in there? He could have had ace eight for a better full house. Le Schiefer had ace six. And the board was, uh, oh, so it was a classic uh, rounder situation then. <laughs> right? <laughs> What was it? Ace nine against aces on nine nine ace. Similar. Ace that's the Oliver. Romania. That's the Oliver Hudson hand. Oh, Juicy J getting tricky here with this five million king seven. Would have maybe liked to have seen a peel here instead. But also, you know, in the flow of things, maybe seeing that Ray Maniac is folding a bit too much after opening the action on the button, but this time with the ace king, and we are back to two to one. Ray Maniac in the year of Romaniacs. <laughs> yes. I, I'm pretty sure, by the way, it goes like this. All nine players get to showdown, and then it's like ace high, pair of aces, three of a kind, flush, flush, full house, straight flush, right? Isn't it like eight different showdowns? It's a lot. You're not getting, well, I was going to say you're not getting ace four to full, but I still think you might get a sticky call here from the Ray Maniac. I mean, it's tough to, tough to call here with just a four, but you are beating those six and seven X hands. Some club draws. Over bet. Yeah, and that has been working on this final table for Juicy J, and you have to wonder, has Ray Maniac Look back at that footage and seen that every time Juicy J has overbet, it has been a bluff. James confirming confirming that Hybra Fellows is correct. First hand was King Queen of Spades for Nut Flush. Eight eight for full house. A six better full house than the straight flush. So there is a full house better than the one Le Schiefer showed. So Le Schiefer didn't even have the second best hand. That's just lazy writing. I actually think it's somewhat better than it just being like fourth nuts, third nuts, second nuts, first nuts. But there's lots about it that is lazy writing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe hire someone that knows about poker and doesn't even have to be super high concept, but just, like, make it a really sick call that, that uh, you know, Daniel Craig. Yeah, someone like you. But maybe not. No, maybe someone like a real writer, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Did you know that he wrote for Mad TV? True I did not story. write for Mad TV. Oh, shit. Um, he's, he's written a lot. But I was the poker years. consultant on a movie about 12 years later after Casino Royale. Oh, my God. Don't tell me it was Molly's game. It was not Molly's game. Okay, gosh. I have such a bone to pick with that uh, that movie. It is a movie that has yet to be released, but it has already been shortlisted for Best Picture for 2021. Shut up. That's awesome. Anyways, I actually enjoyed Molly's game. It's just the, the one hand that they show where they basically describe how this one guy was able to, like, convince people to fold the best hand and then the guy has the nuts and he convinces him to fold it's like the board's like nine ten queen he's like like doug has the nuts here but like he's convincing him that he should fold i really hated that scene when i saw it in the theater when i rewatched the movie it actually made sense to me it made sense to you like yeah like, so wait did the person have the nuts or not or you're saying yes. that, like, this power that toby mcguire whoever has correct Okay. He's so convincing, and these players are so bad. Guys, come on. I'm sorry. We all play poker. Everyone in the, all 2,800 of you, you play. You don't get talked out of <laughs> folding the best hand. Like, you do if you don't know how to play poker. <sighs> <sighs> this is such an interesting hill to die on, Joe. <laughs> 
but considering you have written for a best picture in the future and I have not, <laughs> I, 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 I have to correct you again, just so I don't get accused of stolen valor. I didn't write on the movie. I just show, I just like gave notes on the I'm script and then, yeah. and then on set, I was telling them how to do things more correctly, but just to be clear, they didn't always listen to me either. So, mm -hmm. So anything that you see that's good in the movie, Joe is responsible for. Everything bad, he had nothing to do Correct. with. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> Hedging is what they call it in our business. <laughs> Same hands here for Ray Maniac and Juicy J with 3-4. Both have a pair. Both open-ended. Yeah, but only one of them has a flush draw. It's true. Let's get the, let's get the ocean out there. The lake. Johnny Rolls says, is Juicy J from Canada? I remember him grinding NLO8. SNGs back in the day on Poker Stars. You you are correct. GCJ is Canadian. And looking like real great shape to win this Sunday million here. Now back up to three and a half to one. But more importantly, Joseph, the big blind now up to 1.2 million, which means that Ray Maniac is at about 15 big blinds. And Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is creeping towards that danger zone. Yeah, sure is. That's a show I need to catch up on. Archer. Acha. Archer had more missed seasons than hit seasons after season four, but some of them are good. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I I uh I lost consistent interest at around you haven't like missed much seven or eight or something. You haven't missed much, but the last season they did, they like brought it back to ISIS in the, in New York city, like the original setting. And it's, I thought it was good again. You know, there's actually a, a clothing store here in Montreal also called ISIS. It's so weird going by and seeing that. It's like a popular high end store, I think. That's how you know something's really high end, where they're like, "We don't yeah. care." The yeah, terrorist yeah, yeah. organization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like, we're not changing. He's like, no, we're not. We, yeah, we were here first. <laughs> Good opportunity here for Juicy J to fold out a hand like King Three that is beating them, and if it works, which it probably will, right? You're sitting there with King Three. What are you doing, Joe? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Interesting decision to limp here for those 16 big blinds. I kind of like it. You'd think that short stack, a hand like King-10, sometimes you just want to shove it in. But Ray Maniac's going to call pretty correctly, and often calling against King-10 is going to be better hands. So I like to just limp, try to see a flop. Has flopped worse here, but getting some more equity on the turn may just want to target those seven and four exits you have to imagine joe on this board if ray maniac had a nine or a big spade draw would probably check rays all in for 15 big blinds mm. so i think that would have made it a good opportunity for juicy j to fire again on that mm. queen fold out that seven or that four didn't go for it and now is going to rescind that five million chip pot so i think a, a small maybe results oriented kind of uh mistake in my mind So much easier in the booth seeing the cards. Ray Maniac been disciplined up until this point. Could call it off with Ace Four. Would be behind. Does not. Doesn't do it. A pair of eights for Ray Maniac. Looking pretty good here. Does not want to see a seven as it would give the effect of nuts to Juicy J93. After having just lost that pot to bottom pair, I wonder if Juicy J doesn't want to let that happen again and let a six win here, but an eight for Ray Maniac. Looking like going to take down another five million. And 
Maniac limping in with the queen six. Free flop for 10 trade. Just 10, 10, 9. The kitchens. Yeah, you're right. Double gutter now, though. So some hope here for Rim Maniac. A jack or a seven will give them the straight. Oh! And it does come in. So Rim Maniac getting a little momentum here. Going to be up over $27 million. And if that's that that's if there isn't a bet on the river and a call. Yeah, great. I mean, is there ever a scenario where the six... The, the low end straight gets folded, not for that amount. No, but. I think that this is this is kind of the script here. A small blocker bet from Juicy J, not wanting to, um, you know, get have to pay off too big of a bet from a straight. You know, you bet two million there, that's what you lose if their your opponent has a has a jack or a six. But if you check and call off four million, you're losing twice as much. So sometimes it's nice to work in those block bets. You also might get some value from a worse hand. Um, with with your trips against like an eight or a nine or whatever what have you, so I think that he uh, Juicy J played that just right. But block bets something I'm really good at, Griffin. I'm great <laughs> at block bets. Yeah, I'm Maybe. really really good at getting to, to the river with like a second best hand. Hey, we're on a break. Okay, we're on a break. The heads up matches. We made were on it a break to the break, and this is often the time at which we decide that the one-to-one -one commentator to player ratio is not good enough let's bring in a third commentator the man james hardigan thank you joe and yes we are heads up juicy j from canada versus ray maniac from romania for the title of this week's sunday million champion but also that first prize of 108k as you observed joe a difference of thirty thousand dollars in prize money but before we continue with our conversation about the sunday million you brought up james bond casino royale came up in conversation Here and we go Joe and I have been down this avenue so many times. Everyone labors over the final hand, and they point out how ridiculous is it. Look, I still maintain that is not the most egregious poker hand in the movie. The so-called bluff hand, the hand where Le Chief gives off the false tell when he has quad jacks, and Bond supposedly hero calls and is wrong because Le Chief was giving off a false tell. Bond has a full house in that hand. It's no. not a. It's not a. Oh, Le Chief, you thought I must have been bluffing, Mr. Bond. No, he had a full house. It's an old-fashioned cooler. So when everyone starts losing their with Bond and Vespers like you let your ego get in the way and, oh, I thought I had him because I thought he was bluffing. No, you had a full house. If Bond mm -hmm. makes the hero there on the river with, like, King High, it's a much better moment in the movie. It's a much better hand. But they just couldn't resist yeah. making it a cooler and then trying to twist the narrative around the only reason that Bond didn't lay down a boat is because he thought Le Chief was bluffing. So yeah. stupid. Okay, so well, in the same way that I can explain away the Molly's game thing, I can explain this away. Oh, boy. Bond is so good at poker that he <laughs> actually knows Le Chiffre, has quads, but calls anyway because his ego does get in the way. Right. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's an interesting theory, Joe, but the false tell doesn't really play into that at all. Crucially, there's a lot wrong with the poker in Casino Royale, but ultimately it doesn't bother me because it's still an awesome film and I still maintain it is probably one of, if not the best, of every of the films in the Bond franchise. But we're done with that now. We still have a heads-up battle going on and oh my word, is this thing going the distance. Griffin, this is what I call an outlier. In any poker tournament, right, you have an expectation of roughly where and when it's going to finish based on the number of blinds in play. This has gone beyond that point, and I'm slightly surprised that we are still going. But I guess based on how cagey some of the play was earlier on, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it was a very it was it was a very interesting sort of final 64 today. It didn't it didn't really feel steady or consistent there'd be these huge all-in clashes over and over i mean at one point i feel like in the final two tables there was four or five eliminations i think in a row hand after hand after hand so it's come in these you know incredible bunches and then it's been been a bit uh, sort of uh, dead and we had to sort of maybe fill in the time and and but there's a lot of still a lot of interesting things you know uh, developments over the course of the final table mostly uh but the dominant play of juicy j93 yeah um although juicy j Joe, unable to close it yet, still has the dominant chip lead, better than a two-to-one advantage, but we are at that situation now where 
a double up pretty much switches things in Ray Maniac's favor. And because the blinds are so big, because it is now so shallow, even for the chip leader, there is no guarantee of Juicy J taking this down. Nope, still the favorite. Still, uh, I think, in my opinion, coming across as a slightly more experienced player. Obviously, we know more about Juicy J's history, uh, but, you know, as we say, anything can happen. And we're at that point in the game when they're heads up where they can elect to reduce the break if both players come back from break early and decide to carry on. Oh. They can, and that's where we're at. 3Bet for Fun asks, what is Juicy's history? Uh, that would be the things, you know, the tournaments Juicy's played up until this point, the wins that they've had, you know, their experience. Thank you for the question. Someone just said Quantum of Solace is the best Bond film. I, just... <laughs> I, I think I need to go, guys. <laughs> I think Quantum of Solace gets more it's hate than, than it deserves. It's, it not deserves that, it's not that bad. It I'm really gonna rewatch it. What, was it just because it followed Casino Royale and there was such fanfare with it? Like, I actually, the, oh, my biggest problem with Quantum of Solace is like at the end of the movie when when him and the girl like roll up to the evil villain's lair with like no guns, no weapons, as if they've never seen a James Bond movie before. Um, <laughs> Joe, I think you may be confusing Spectre and Quantum of Solace. Spectre, that's what I'm talking about. I like. Yeah, we're not of Solace. talking. We're not talking about Spectre though. I think you're right, Griffin. I think it was because Casino Royale set the bar so high. Um, and I think Quantum of Solace tried to do something very brave, which is the idea of doing a direct sequel. And we've got the flush here for Juicy J. Better than the flush on board. Um, what was the plot of Qu Quantum of Solace? Remind well, me. Well, it, it was establishing this criminal organization called Quantum, which then got superseded by Spectre in, in that movie. Um, mm -hmm. And it was all about like water rights in Bolivia, but it was a direct sequel, right, to Casino Royale. Picked up the very off the very sort of last moment of right. of Casino Royale, and that was a brave thing to do, a very different thing for the Bond films to do. I think Casino Royale's biggest problem is it had the wrong director, and Mark Forster was his action scenes are terrible. Um, they are so badly directed, so badly edited. Every action sequence in that movie is a disaster. And ultimately, Bond movies do depend on their action scenes. So Juicy J actually uh, finding the aggressive action preflop in, in three all-ins in a row has now made it 70 million to 18 million. Um, I think Ray Maniac's going to get one back here with these 16 big blinds, but uh, it looks like things are playing a bit faster and looser here. Now that we're at this huge 1.2 million chip level. I mean, think about how many chips do you even start in the Sunday million? 10,000? Yes. And the big blind is 1.2 million. So, you know, a lot has had to go right for these two to get to this position. And then a massive opportunity here to have a six-figure score. It's a bit like the Alan Partridge caravan scene there where Joe starts getting Bond films confused. Stop getting Bond wrong! <laughs> My point stands is that I didn't mind Quantum of Solace except for that part, which it wasn't in Quantum of Solace, which means I didn't mind Quantum of Solace. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying, is it? Like... I still have, I have such a good feeling about no, no Time to Die. I just want to bloody see it already. Yeah. I really do. It's the people involved, cast. As a big fold there with the two pair for Juicy J folding the king. Wow. Here's um, a fun fact, Griffin. Daniel Craig is is older now than Sean Connery was when he did Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. Wow. That's not true. <laughs> you son of a... That took you way too long. It didn't take me anything. No, I just for a moment, you. I thought you were going to say he's, <laughs> old, he's older than Sean Connery was when he made Never Say Never Again, which is not inconceivable because Daniel Craig is now in his 50s. <laughs> That reminds me of ye of yesterday. Uh, Jonah Hill tweeted like a picture of himself on Instagram, and he kind of had like slick back hair, and he, he was a bit like a bit orange. And the the, the the headline just said, "Caption, pardon me," just said fifty. And then we both looked at me and my girlfriend. Both looked at, it and she's like, 
he's not 50, is he? I'm like, yeah, maybe he is. And then we looked at his age. He's like 37, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Jabated. Well, yeah, got baited. we are still at the 600K 1.2 million level, but in a minute's time going to 800,000 1.6 million. And at that point, unless Ray Maniac can start winning some significant parts. Ray Maniac is going to be around the 10 big blind mark. I mean, already we can see Juicy J is just open shoving on his opponent. Yeah. Oh, Ray Maniac traps by limping with the jacks, gets shoved oh, on by King 8. You should have seen this one coming. Oh, King no. King by flop, 10 on the top oh. of the straight, and Ray Maniac doubles up. <sighs> Juicy J wow. is indeed. And just flopping the new treants. No, hey, Griffin, flopping the joint. Yes, the juicy joint. The juicy joint here. It is a hashtag fun fact, by the way, that Daniel Craig is now the longest serving James Bond in terms of years. Would that have still been true if it hadn't have been delayed? No time to yes, die? Yes, it would have been. Hmm. It's only been delayed by he, a year. Where does he rank? Where does he rank in your Bonds? Craig? Possibly yeah. number two after Dalton. Okay. Wow, Connery barely breaking the top three for you. Just because you're the original doesn't mean you're the best, Sean. <laughs> I've always been a Brosnan guy myself. Yeah, I think Brosnan was a little bit too bland for my liking. Bland. I don't know. He, has, he had such a good, like, strained face, you know? Like, when things weren't going well. <laughs> Trying to get out of a jam, I, he's just I, like, yeah! I, I love the way... Like, this is this is Griffin's assessment for best Bond. <laughs> he had a really good strained face. You guys Some know people call that about. acting, but Griffin. Yeah. Give me a plus one in the chat, guys. <laughs> You're probably one of those people that didn't like Goldeneye. I did like Goldeneye a lot. Goldeneye yes. is by far and away the best of the Brosnan movies. Interestingly, oh, close, yeah. interestingly, because Goldeneye was adapted from a screenplay that was written for Timothy Dalton's Bond, which is the closest to Ooh. Fleming's Bond that the films have ever come to. I think that Goldeneye had the best theme song. Goldeneye. It also had the best video game, maybe of all time. That's true. Any that video is game. true. Well, Ray Maniac is back on the ropes, ladies and gentlemen, and, and being shoved even on happen, you know, by Juicy J. Death. Pocket fours. Unlikely to get a call from 9-7, but that's where we're at right now. Oh. That's where we're at, shoving Jack eight. It's an absolute shove fest right now. King four all in, caught oh, by threes. It's a flip. Threes holding. Three's good. Three's win, and it is over. We have our champion. Congratulations to Juicy J93 from Canada, winner of this week's Sunday Million. Ray Maniac, the runner up for just shy of $79,000. Juicy J93 takes the first prize of $108,784.50. And this one is finally in the books congratulations to the canadian player for shipping the title and that six figure score uh, and griffin thank you very much for being part of your first sunday million stream i hope it's not my last i had a great time anytime you let me get you let me know guys uh spoiler alert you're gonna be back in a couple of weeks time um joe next week maria's back in the mix and you are going to be flying solo with Ms. ho because i am on my holes Excellent. Looking forward to it. Uh, I, You know, hopefully this still exists as a show when you get back. Can I, I join and play as James? No. no. Thank you for your question. Uh, as I said, Griffin, don't worry. You are coming back on a future episode. This, okay. will be a, this will be a recurring special guest star appearance for you. Uh, can't promise that we'll get you in the cre opening credits, but, you know, 
in time in time uh, so that's it for tonight guys thank you very much for watching a reminder there'll be a new podcast on Thursday the last installment of Pokestars Retro on Thursday and then another Sunday Million stream next Monday but for now from Griffin Benger Joe Stapleton and me James Hartigan it's good night from the Pokestars Arena